Welcome to the Exotic Pet Collective. My name is Richard, and today's guest, uh, I'm sure you all already know of her. Uh, she doesn't need much of an introduction, uh, but it's exciting to have her on the podcast. She actually was late. Uh, not today. We were supposed to record like a week ago. <laughs> Just internet problems and you know how, how life is. So uh, it's, it's exciting that she is now here, and uh, we're going to have a nice conversation. I hope you all enjoy it. Uh, but before we get into that, I do want to thank the sponsors of today's show. And our first sponsor today is no stranger to the podcast, and that is our friends over at Arthropod Ambassadors. Now, their aim is to support others interested in bugs and the well-being of arthropods around the world. They're working on spreading education with ResinArt, the Mobile Bug Zoo, and informational YouTube videos, as well as a recent new line of stickers and pins. From compost-enhancing roly-polies to alien-like top predator mantises, arthropods come in all shapes shapes and sizes and are waiting to teach us more about the earth that we all have in common. So if you're looking for a mantis, jumping spiders, isopods, roaches, or assassin bugs, head on over to arthropodambassadors.com and check out what species they have available. You can also find very helpful care videos for your pet mantis, scorpions, vingaroons, isopods, tarantulas, and other arthropods on their YouTube channel, also called Arthropod Ambassadors. You can also follow them on Instagram and Facebook and stay up to date with any new content or species that they may have available in the future. So a huge thanks to Arthropod Ambassadors for sponsoring this podcast. And if you want to learn more about them, I'll link the podcast that we did together at the end of this video or down below in the show notes. And our second sponsor today is none other than tarantulacribs.com. If you're looking for high-end acrylic enclosures for your tarantulas, scorpions, isopods, or pretty much any invertebrate, then you need to head over to tarantulacribs.com. They recently restocked their website and they have some new products coming out in the very near future like larger enclosures. So whether you're looking for an arboreal or terrestrial enclosure, they have a wide variety of sizes for any stage of your invert's life. I use them a lot for my tarantulas and true spiders, and they're my favorite enclosure by far. And if you use the code TCollective10 at checkout, you'll receive 10% off your entire order. Currently, they're only available to residents of the United States, but they are working on international shipping, so hopefully that'll be available soon. So thank you so much, Tarantula Cribs, for supporting this podcast and for all the sponsors today. You guys are awesome, and and you're integral in keeping this podcast up and running. So thank you so much for your support. Welcome to the podcast, uh, the one and only Tarantula Cat. Oh, Jesus, she's not even here. <laughs> there she is. Oh, hey. It's like, it was a dramatic intro, and you're not even on the camera. <laughs> I know. <laughs> nice. I wanted to hide first. <laughs> well, thank you for uh, for finally coming on. It, it took you Thank long you out. for having me, for asking me. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I, I asked you. Did I ask you? You didn't technically ask. It was more of a guilt. It, it was it was a, a move my yeah. wife does. Like, so why haven't I come on the podcast yet? <laughs> like, yeah, you asked Dion. I was like, Dion told me he's like, I'm going on Richard Pod Richard's podcast. I'm like, oh, he's just asking everybody besides me. Then I guess. <laughs> I, you know, I, I had to work my way up to you. That's, that's all that was. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go with that. You can't start off with like a top tier guest. You got you got to build up to it. Start at the bottom with uh with Adam from Wiccan's we Wicked Reptile. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Had to get the Canadians out of the way first. Yeah, get them done and over. <laughs> oh, that, have you have you met Adam before? He's, I haven't. He's a funny guy. You should uh, you should talk to him sometime. If you get a chance. Yeah. He added me on Facebook, so maybe we'll maybe we will become friends. Nice, <laughs> very cool. So we were just talking before we started, and I was like, we should start recording because <laughs> this is good stuff. Uh, but you were telling me about a pet shop that you are going. You're in St. Louis. Can I say that? Yeah. That, okay. I don't wanna, yeah, that's fine. People know now. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty big city. It's like the. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, I'm not in a big metropolitan fancy city like you are, uh, so I don't have cool pet shops that I can I can go to that are locally owned. Though I did find one recently. Uh, it's about an hour and a half away in Morgantown, like where WVU is. There's a cool uh, pet shop there that was like locally owned. They had tarantulas and all kinds of cool snakes, and yeah, but they also had like birds and mice and you know fish and all that other stuff. I'm not that interested <laughs> in, uh, but it was like cool because they had like a little. Uh, reptile and tarantula section. And I walk in and the girl behind the counter is wearing a tarantula collective t-shirt. And I was like, 
Holy crap. I saw that. Like, I was yeah. shocked. I was like, I got nervous, to be honest. At first, I was like, oh my, oh man, <laughs> somebody here knows me. And then she just gave me this weird look, like, I kind of recognize that guy. And then I could see it, like, the, like her eyes lit up. She's like, you're Richard. And I'm like, oh, jeez. I just got, like, out of the woods. I'm, I got mud all over me and sweaty. I'm like, this is not good. I should have uh, should have anticipated that. But they're really nice. The picture, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She was very friendly. Really helped me out. Helped me get the uh, enclosure that I, I've been working on for the dart frogs. And yeah. So I was like, I'm definitely going to have to come back. But it was like, I'm used to going to a chain pet store where everything yeah. is, you know, nice and neat. And usually they're out of stock of half the shit I need. So there's a bunch of <laughs> empty shelves space. And this was the exact opposite. They were in the middle of reorganizing or remodeling or something. So there's just, it, it was like a hoarder's pet shop. There was just like <laughs> stuff stacked everywhere. Yeah. I was like, I need a backdrop, but I can't, I don't really know where the back, she's like, oh, it's, I got to move this and it's back here. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> but they had, a, they had, a, I mean, anything I wanted and stuff I didn't even know was out there, like enclosures and backdrops and water dishes and stuff. I was like, man, this place is so cool. I can't even find this stuff on the internet. So I, I definitely got to go back. Yeah, and I feel you. It's called Exotic I, Pets. No, Exotic Jungle Superstore, something like that. Exotic. I, I've screwed it up. I was going to try to give him a shout out, but I I, I, I failed. So tell us about your your, your shop. <laughs> uh, so I go to Tropical World Pets and there's a couple like pretty decent shops around here, but they're my favorite. I've been going to them for like ever. Like since I was a kid, they've been there and they were like when I grew up, like in my childhood home, they were in walking distance. So I could like walk up there and look at the fish and stuff like that. And when I did like get into keeping animals, like as an adult, I got into fish first. Mm. And um, so that's where I just was going. And I remember like the first time I saw a tarantula there was like, they took me in the back, like somebody was working and they were like, Hey, you have to see how big this tarantula is. And I, I have the picture still on my Instagram, my personal Instagram. It's from 2011. And so they took me in the back and they showed me this mature male, uh, T Sturmy. Oh, wow. And like I had, I took a picture of it. I put it on my Instagram, never really thought about it again, but I would see them having like, you know, slings and stuff there. And I'd look at them and I'd be like, why is this little spider $60? Like, why wouldn't you want to get a bigger one for like $60? Wouldn't you want like an adult or something? Like I didn't get it, yeah. you know, but when I did fall into keeping tarantulas, actually what's funny is I first caught a jumping spider and that's what I kept. And when I caught it, I actually went up there and I took it up there. And one of the owners was like, oh yeah, that that's the jumping spider. You can keep them. They're really cool. Like all you need to do is do this, blah, blah, blah. And they even made me a little, cause I caught it in a baby bottle. Okay. Um, they made me a little, um, like one of these kind of enclosures, like out of one of these little deli things. And when you say you they caught it, made in, a, it in a baby bottle, like, like, yeah, like with the nipple the and all that? <laughs> yeah. Well, I had just had Fiona. So okay. there was a big jumping spider I saw like across the room. And I just grabbed, I had a baby bottle right there. So I just grabbed that and put it in there. Okay. And I kept it in there for like a couple of days because I was like, oh, this is so cool. You know, and I had my crested gecko and I feed him crickets and stuff. So I was like, I can feed it a cricket and see what it does and stuff like that. So once I decided, okay, I'm going to keep it. Yeah. I went up to Tropical World Pets and they made me a little enclosure and threw in some eco earth and gave it to me like that and like just you know sent me on my way they didn't like ask me to pay for anything they were just like oh this is what you do and nice. ever since man they've been like the best like so helpful with everything <laughs> that's very cool so you grew up in st louis then. is that, is mm -hmm. that what i can draw um, yeah and so so you started i just kind of want to get the origin story of tarantula <laughs> <laughs> Do a Marvel superhero I don't know. origin story. Here. <laughs> so you started with fish, like like yeah. uh, like goldfish or beta fish or I mean what? betas, betas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, like, did you have multiple betas, like in different oh, yeah. aquariums? You're one of those. People. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. In my at my mom's house, um, I, in my bedroom, I remember like I had so many betas and um, they needed, you know, a heater filter and all that. So every outlet I had in my bedroom was yeah. taken by fish stuff. And I just had like, I think I had like four aquariums and like, they don't have to be like terribly huge for betas, but like you have to do more water changes, the smaller it is because the ammonia will build up faster or stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah, I had like, I think it was like, I had my 16 gallon. So I still have that and that's still up and running. I've, you know, 
kind of tore it down a couple times, but it's still up and running. But then I had like a couple like four gallons, you know, stuff like that that had just a beta in it. And I I probably would have had more than that if I had more outlets. <laughs> <laughs> so how, so what was the progression from betas? Like what what area did you go to next? It started with the betas. And then I started doing research on other things that I could keep with the betas. So okay. I started like getting into like shrimp and like some betas will eat like cherry shrimp and ghost shrimp. Um, I had some pretty good luck. So I didn't really have that problem. And so I started keeping like shrimp and snails. You could do like mystery snails and they would be pretty good typically. But um, that was kind of like my first intro into inverts, I guess, <laughs> was keeping all of those. Yeah. And then eventually, and it was like 2015, I think Jurassic World came out, like the newer Jurassic Park movie. And Eric and I went to go see it. And like, after we saw the movie, I was like, I want a reptile. Like I've never had a reptile. I've had, you know, hamsters, gerbils, guinea pigs, fish, uh, hermit crabs. I've had all that, but I really want a reptile. So we went to a pet shop around here and like my friend worked there and there was like so many to choose from. And I was just like, I felt so overwhelmed and she like really helped me narrow down what would work for me. And so she had a bunch of crested geckos that she had hatched and um, she sold me Rango and the entire setup and everything like that. And Rango's, um, I still have him. He's like six years old now. Uh, so he was kind of like the gateway into things outside of the norm. Okay, I've always wanted a crested gecko. It's one of those. Yeah, I've never. I've I've, I've, I've heard a lot of good things about them. They're very easy to take care of and stuff. Oh yeah. And I somebody actually reached out to me like about six months ago or something like in the height of uh, COVID, but it was also winter. Said mm-hmm. they were they breed them and they're like and I mentioned it. Uh, you know, maybe since I mentioned it again, they'll they'll reach back out to me. But they're like, once it warms up. <laughs> I'll send you one of our babies. And I was like, that sounds great. And, but that happens a lot. People like offer like, Hey, I'm going to give this to you, but it's, you know, we got to wait till I pull the egg sack or some, you know, something has to happen first. Weather gets warm. Yeah. And then I, I just, I lose the message and I never find it <laughs> and they forget. Yeah. I, I'm like, oh, I'm not going to. I feel you. Yeah. I can't, you for, I can't you should it. for sure get one. Like they're, they're the best. I've had Rango, like I said, for like six years, he, since he was a hatchling and he's been through like multiple moves with us, a pregnancy, um, yeah. like just so much. He's just made it through like so many life changes and hasn't like been a problem or an extra thing I have to do or anything like that. It's just easy. So you went from beta fish, shrimp, snails, like that kind of thing, and and just did that for like years, and then finally got a crested gecko. Yeah, it just was a yeah. slow kind of progression. Yeah. But when did things Pretty really much. start uh, snowballing to the point, you know, that you have other YouTubers out there calling you out as a oh. pet order? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> um, so that's well. First of all, when I was a kid, I did have like a ton of pets at a time. So like we've always been that kind of family. Like my mom would rescue cats, and we had a bunch of cats, all indoor, all fixed, like mm-hmm. all vetted. But we had all those cats. My sister rescues um, like Chihuahuas specifically, Oof. like the Chihuahuas with like no teeth, or one had like three legs, one has diabetes, oh like old ones. Yeah. So like we're that kind of family. I love dogs, <laughs> like, but I have no tolerance for Chihuahuas. <laughs> And my sister has like yeah. a couple of them. <laughs> They're kind of bratty. They for sure are bratty. But yeah. yeah, so she was, my mom was always doing that. My sister was always, as she got older, she was doing that. But like we had like all the guinea pigs, all the gerbils, all the everything when I was little. And then I got older and I had my guinea pig for like eight years until actually I had a guinea pig from middle school all the way until I graduated with my first associate's degree. Oh, wow. So I had him a long time. But like, it didn't snowball, I guess, until like I was older and I realized I'm an adult and I can go get animals without having to ask anybody. And (laughs) like this, I can finally do this. Like I I was like a realization I had. And so like, you know, it started with the fish. It went to Rango. And then after I got Rango, I was like, I want a gargoyle gecko. I want a leopard gecko. I want sprogs. I want all this stuff. And then I ended up not getting any of it <laughs> until I think we were probably until we were like in a better situation, like financially to like afford that because you know, it's not cheap. That's true. Especially if you have children. Oh yeah. Well, we didn't at first, you know, no? and then we okay. had Fiona. Yeah. So I've been with Eric for like 10 years. So 
we've been together <laughs> a while. <laughs> but, um, and, and he's that a lot of people ask how he's so tolerant of this. I'm like, because he's dealt with it for so long, like yeah. he's used to it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it snowballed after Rango. I think Eric wanted a snake, which he also like. Just so everybody is aware, Eric takes care of the snakes. He does pretty much all the work for all the snakes. So, like, that's something I don't even think about or have to worry about. I just handle them. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's like, it doesn't all fall on me. Like, he is very much involved and he's a he's an influence in this, too. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I wish I had some help. My family's like, yeah, that's, that's your it's thing. Nice. <laughs> you it's nice. It's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Well, see, he wanted the snakes. I wanted the snakes too, but he wanted the snakes more. And sure. I didn't want to feed the snakes because I love rodents. And um, even the fro like we we only do frozen, but I still can't feed them. He does all of it. Like I never have fed them at all, not once. So I, it sounds like you were kind of raised in this type of uh, yeah. having pet. In like so was I. Like growing up, we yeah. had always had a couple dogs, occasionally a cat would. I don't think we ever like went out and got a cat, but like cats would adopt us. They'd show up and we'd bring them inside, get them fixed, feed them. They'd usually have babies. <laughs> I think that's how the, at least two of them, my sister, they would just start hanging out on the front porch. My sister would bring it in and then they would have kittens in her closet. My mom's like, oh, hell no. Get it fixed, take it to the vet, do all that stuff, adopt out the kittens and, and then just live yeah. with us from, from then on. But my parents had a lot of birds, a lot of Quaker parakeets and cockatiels and finches and parakeets. And That's why you said birds like that when you were talking about that shop earlier. You were you were like, they have birds and other things I don't care about. And I was like, well, <laughs> damn. Like, <laughs> I mean, I, I spent probably a good 12 years cleaning bird cages every Saturday. I got, I got sick of it. I was like, I'm tired. Oh. I'm never, never cleaning bird poop again. <laughs> but I, I do have... I always wanted a macaw, like one of those big parrots. Yeah. You know, so if that ever came up, my wife's like, hell no. But, you know, I at some point, I'm, I'm going to get one. Yeah, <laughs> I want I want a pigeon. A pigeon? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. They're cute. <laughs> I just chased one around the block at my mom's house the other day because I didn't know if it was a pet pigeon or like, you know, a city chicken. Yeah. Like, normally, there's not really pigeons in her neighborhood. So I was like, this maybe is a pet. So I chased it for like 30 minutes and I was recording it and stuff. And I was like trying to catch it, but it ended up flying away eventually. So I guess it wasn't a pet. <laughs> like leave me alone, crazy lady. It almost became a pet though. Yeah. It almost did. <laughs> yeah, I got into uh, hamsters and then my, my big thing was tree frogs and salamanders and toads and turtles. Like I love amphibians even more than reptiles. Like I just really yeah. love amphibians. And I would go camping a lot as a kid and I didn't have that naturalistic kind of mindset yet. So it was like, I'd find a salamander at the Creek and would scoop it up in like a cheese ball. Like uh, when I would go camping, you know, like, I don't, they were like, they're like cheese balls. I guess that's what they were like planters. So it was in like this, like almost like a big Pringles can. Like I would always bring those with me and eat them all and then catch something and bring it home in that can. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I, and and now it's like, I look back and I'm like, that was really irresponsible because it wasn't, they were everywhere when I was a kid, but now like the salamanders, yeah. at least here in West Virginia, are, are like threatened or endangered. Like there's not many out there anymore. So kind of felt bad, but I would bring them yeah. home and, and keep them in, in a little aquarium. My dad would help me set it up. He also had fish. He liked fish. So he kind of helped me out with that and occasionally bring home tree frogs, which I really liked. Um, That's awesome. But yeah. And then it's like, so we always had... It was like the playroom at our house, like where, you know, when you're a kid, all the toys are. And then we kind of outgrew it and it just became the animal room. So it's where me and my awesome. sister had all of our little <laughs> hamster cages and reptile cages and birds and stuff. And, you know, so it was like I left, moved out and just I didn't have pets really anymore. I had like one tarantula most of that time, but that was it. <laughs> and But I was also transient, you know, I was like moving around the country and, you know, ne didn't really stay anywhere for more than a year or two. So there wasn't that opportunity to kind of build up a, a large pet collection. Yeah. You know, so, but, so as soon as I settled down, they started piling up. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you start making YouTube videos? Because if I remember <clears throat> right, you didn't start, you, you started YouTube before you started a tarantula channel. Is that, is that correct? Have I done my spying correctly? Um, so I actually do have videos privated from like, gosh, like maybe seven or eight years ago where yeah. I would, I wouldn't really make like anything serious. I would just like film like my fish tank or I would film, I, I have videos of Rango, like so small, my crested gecko. Okay. So I wasn't like ever seriously into it, 
but I always wanted to make YouTube videos. And like, I made so many YouTube channels and failed so many YouTube channels. And I feel like people don't understand that like, I failed so many times before I actually had a channel that like anybody paid attention to. <laughs> um, well, what kind of channels the, were they? Like what, what were you doing on there? Just like, like I did like thrift hauls. I remember I would talk about like, I do vlogs, uh, art stuff. Um, but it just never stuck and I never was consistent with it, but I always wanted to make videos. And when I was in college, like we even had a class where we would like learn how to like edit videos and stuff like that, but it never was consistent. And I never felt like, I remember I was so embarrassed by anything that I would post on YouTube. Like I wouldn't want anybody in my real life to see it. Oh, and I feel the opposite with tarantulas when I started like doing tarantula videos, I was like, this is it. Like, this feels right. This is coming naturally. Like I can talk so much about these. I have so many ideas. And they're like, obviously I started watching tarantula YouTube first. So, you know, Pecco, I watched all his videos. Didn't meet Exotic Slayer until after I started making videos. And at the time his channel was like, not big at all. Like he had like a, I think like seven or 10 K when we first met and I yeah. had maybe like 500 subscribers tops, you know, but like I had been watching uh Pecco and Peyton's tarantulas, Rob C deadly tarantula girl. Um, um who else was there? John 3800 um, or whatever. Yeah. John 3800, of course. And yeah. yeah, like I watched like all their videos and eventually I was like, you know, it, it, it really worked out because I had been in college and I graduated and then, you know, I had the option, should I go to get my bachelor's in fine arts or do I want to get pregnant and do that, get that done now? Because I didn't want to get like interrupted later on to have to stop. <laughs> you know what I mean? Cause like when you're, when you're in the career, you, you're, you have Damn, a career, you're like trying to build me. something. Well, you know, is a lot of, a lot of, it, it takes a lot to, you know, and I wanted to yeah. like, it, when I had a baby, I wanted to, just do that and focus on that and, you know, being a mom. And then I would try to get into something after like I established myself <laughs> and got, got it together. Cause you know, I can only, I can only do so many things at once. So that's what I did. I folk, I didn't go to get my bachelor's. I decided to, we, we decided let's have a baby now. And, you know, once she gets older then I will decide, do I want to go back to college? What, what do I want to do? And it was actually funny because it was like the feeling of not doing anything, like not doing anything, I guess, for myself after I had a kid, you know, cause I was always thinking of her and she was like such, you know, she was a baby. So mm -hmm. demanding. And, you know, I had Rango <laughs> and the dogs and I had, I still had a fish tank and some gerbils and stuff, but like when I caught the jumping spider, and I wasn't doing anything else. And I say that very loosely because obviously I was. Yeah. <laughs> I finally was like, you know what? This is the time to start a YouTube channel because like, I have the time to do it. And okay. I had just started getting into to tarantulas. Uh, first, the jumping spider. And then it moved on to tarantulas. And I was watching all these tarantula channels. And I was like, this is like the prime time for me to do this. If I'm going to do it, like do it now. And then it ended up becoming what it is. So like, it just, here we are. <laughs> nice. So just, just backtrack a second. You said something that Sorry. I kind of found interesting. Like, so you, and this, this is going to sound terrible. I almost am embarrassed to ask this question, but you, in, you intentionally decided to have a child. Like you guys yeah. talked about it. We're like, we should have a kid. <laughs> yeah. We got married. Cool. Well, first we got married uh, in April ourselves, like just the two of us, because we just wanted who, to like do. Would you just, have gotten married with? Well, you know, we didn't have like a, a th we had a wedding planned, but we got married alone, just us before the wedding. Gotcha. And I thought it was like so some then, polyamory yeah. thing. Like, well, six of us were no. going to get married, but we decided just the two. <laughs> no, not okay. that. Not that. <laughs> so just but a very we, private, small ceremony. Yeah. Gotcha. Just the two of us. Uh, we had like a little ceremony and like, I think his like mom was there. And then afterwards we went to my mom's house, you know, and it was just us. And okay. then we had the actual wedding in October. And then like later, like right after we had the wedding, I was, we were like, let's just have a baby. Let's, and then we literally right away. <laughs> oh, wow. Sounds so, so cool. You guys were in love. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for sure. He's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I only ask because like pretty much everybody I know that has children, uh, they were all happy accidents. <laughs> you know what I mean, like yeah. nobody planned oh, on yeah. it. They just kind of came and like, I, I, it makes me feel really selfish because 
I <laughs> tried really, really hard my entire life to not have children. Then I ended up marrying a woman that had kids. So it was like, I, yeah. I didn't, don't have any of my own, but I, you know, I've got some stepchildren now and step For sure. So it, it's cool. I got, I get all the benefits without having to go through the, uh, the baby stages of changing diapers. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's a, that's a phase for sure. But I mean, it's great. And I'm like, and I've said this before, I'm so happy and fortunate that YouTube ended up working out the way it did because I've been able to stay with Fiona home this entire time. Like she just started kindergarten yesterday, but Mm. like this entire time, like I've been able to stay home with her, especially like with, you know, the pandemic and everything. I didn't have to like send her anywhere or daycare or worry about that. And it just like worked out. And it's like, I'm so fortunate it did because if I was working another job, like I would have never been able to experience, you know, that all with her, I guess. So when you started your YouTube channel, was it with the expressed intention of like, I want to turn this into a career or or was it more just like, (laughs) this is something fun to do and it just evolved over time? Yeah, it it was because like I had always been in college and like I did art stuff and I was an art major. So I had this creative outlet that was just not getting pursued for a while after I had Fiona and had graduated. So I like kind of was like, oh, this would be perfect because I will f- be able to get back into creating things and and putting my mind into like all of that. And <laughs> I was just supposed to be like an outlet and for fun. And it still is, but yeah. it just evolved into much more than that. It's interesting. Like I, I feel like there are just creative people out there, people that have that need to create something, whether it's music or art or making videos or whatever. And it's like, when you don't have that outlet, it's like, you you, don't even know. It's not even like you're dying inside. It's it's almost more like you're going crazy. At least for me. Oh yeah. That's what it was. It was like, I need some kind of outlet. I need to like make stuff and put it out there. Even if people hate it, you know, I was able to, I did that with music for a long time. And, uh, then like I stopped, I don't know, maybe, uh, probably about six years ago, kind of made some huge changes in my life. I, and mainly I was like, I got to stop partying so much. Mm-hmm. And that was like directly linked with playing music because everybody oh. I played with was just drinking and doing drugs and you go to the bars for shows and that's, mm-hmm. you know, just dens of, of booze and, and all kinds of <laughs> intoxicants. So it's weird like, because that goes hand in hand like so well, I've noticed too. What do you mean? Like um, artists and, you know, the the drinking and the drug scene and yeah. you know the smoking I I smoked for like so long cigarettes and coffee shops you know how yeah. that, that goes oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah we were talking before about working at coffee shops and, and like mm-hmm. there was uh, there was a point in, my, in in life where I would I would wake I was working at a bakery so I had to get up at four o'clock in the morning be at the bakery at five kind of help get all the stuff baked for the day we opened at like seven and then I ran the coffee shop from seven to two or whatever the eight hours or nine hour day would be. And then I'd leave there. I lived alone in an apartment and it was a pretty, uh, it was just like a, I don't want to say like a flop house, but I mean, it was like I had a bed, a couch, a TV that didn't have cable. You know what I mean? It was like bare minimum. It was just like where we would go and, and drink at night and where I would sleep. And uh, so I didn't want to go home. It was just depressing there. So I would, yeah. I would leave my job at a coffee shop, go about four blocks down to our competitor's coffee shop. And then hang out there for like another eight hours. <laughs> was it like a 24-hour coffee shop? Where I worked? The one that you would walk no, to? No, no. The one I walked to was right next to the college campus. So it was like, I don't even, like they, they opened at like 8 a.m. And were open until like 2 a.m. or something like that. It was one of those. Yeah. Two hippies yep. owned it. And they just like, they pretty much lived upstairs and just hung out. So mm-hmm. I'd go there and hang out. And there was open mics and poetry jams and yeah you know, yeah just <laughs> hanging out talking to people and until it got late enough that it was socially acceptable to start drinking and then we'd walk yeah. over to the bar <laughs> highly caffeinated we had um we had a coffee shop here it unfortunately closed down a while ago but it was called coffee cartel and it was a 24 hour coffee shop in the corner of like um not quite downtown St. Louis, but in a very like populated, nice area. It was like a strip and there were like bars there too, but it was so awesome. We would sit there like, and just hang out like until like four in the morning outside. And you know, there was coffee, but they had other drinks too. And it was just so cool. And then they closed, but yeah. that whole scene was amazing. <laughs> and it, it was, I remember when the Curiosity Rover landed, like we had Wi-Fi there and we were sitting outside and we like watched it happen and stuff like It was like the best place to hang out. Like coffee shops are such a vibe, you know? (laughs) Yeah, I miss them. Uh, Because where I live right now, there's not, they're coffee shops, but they're, they're more of like, they're not, 
I mean, there's Starbucks and stuff like that, but like the, mm-hmm. the locally owned coffee shops are still kind of got that corporate mentality. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. somebody wanted a turnkey business, so they invested in a coffee shop and, and you know, they've got some like college kids working there and just sit in the back <laughs> yeah. and do books. And it's like very sterile. And it's like, it's nothing like the coffee shops I remember hanging out yeah. when I was younger. Like, this place was called the Java Joint. When they first opened, they were 24 hours. And it was right across the street. They opened up a uh, Amazon.com call center. and I started working there like uh, I was probably 18 or something. Oh, 19, you got to play the Jeffrey Bezos song now. You, you got to, <laughs> I know, I, uh, you know what? Just sing it. I know you know the words. So just start singing it. Jeffrey Bezos. <laughs> Jeffrey <laughs> Bezos. <laughs> Everybody's listening like, what the hell? <laughs> Come on, Jeffrey, but, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a weird Copyright shift. claim. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Now we're demonetized. Copyright strike. <laughs> Bo Burnham will come after us. Uh, sorry, <laughs> um, sorry. He, I, I was working, answering emails, customer support, and it was 3 a.m. to noon, 2 a.m. to noon. No, three. it must have been 3 a.m. to noon. So I'd go in at 3 a.m. Bars closed at 2 a.m. So it was like I would be drinking all night and until they did yeah. last call. I would go to the Java joint and drink as much coffee as I possibly could before going into work. Uh, and I, it, you know, Thinking they wouldn't be able to tell I was drunk, but luckily everybody else was also drunk. So it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, and we were like, there was like 12 of us. That was our little group and like a huge call center, but only 12 of us were working that shift and we were all together and all the lights were off except for a couple of like, you know, fluorescent lights above our cubicles. So it was very quiet and just sitting there listening to music and, and responding to emails. <laughs> when you uh, said that you played music, what did you play? Guitar. I was a singer songwriter. Did a lot of folk and blues. Initially, it was nice. punk, but uh, the punk scene kind of died. <laughs> like, uh, after, I was gonna say you got older. It started yeah. out as punk, and then you got older. <laughs> it was punk all through high school, a little bit into college, and then it was just like yeah. I couldn't book any gigs. But they loved singer songwriters in that college town. But like Jack Johnson, Dave Matthews, Ben Harper. That's like when they were at their peak, yeah, guess, in popularity. And it was a college town, all the bars around college. That's what they wanted. I was like, I can do that. So uh, it's yeah. funny because you say that you were into music and stuff, and like you have these creative outlets and stuff. I'm literally the same way. I played the trumpet for like five years or so. So that nice. was like a big thing. And then I also took guitar lessons, piano lessons, but I didn't really get as into that. I was yeah. way more into the trumpet. And then, you know, <laughs> I got older and. Yeah. I wanted to get my lip pierced and that doesn't Ooh. exactly go, you know, hand in hand with the trumpet. But it's just interesting that you have all these different mediums as well. Like, I feel like people who like do YouTube have to like, they just have so many like different creative outlets sometimes because you have to be like diverse, I guess, you yeah. know? I mean, if you're going to whip out <clears throat> your brand geek flag, uh, I started with a trumpet. <laughs> like that was sixth grade. Yes! I, I, I still trumpet. have my trumpet. Me too. <laughs> it was actually my dad's trumpet. So, I mean, it's from like the 50s or something, the 60s. Yeah. It is beat the hell, but it's still, it's still I had a silver one. Okay. Mine was not silver. Which I thought was special. I yeah. thought the silver was cooler. <laughs> and probably in the 60s when he got it, it was that brass, shiny brass color. Yeah. When I got it, it was, it, it you know, all of, all of that lacquer was gone. <laughs> so, it was just yeah. like, it looked like a, an old penny. You know what I mean? Like that kind of look to it. Oh, no. It was so embarrassing. Everybody had these nice brand new trumpets in, in band. And I have this old one. Sorry. But <laughs> it was like, they had cheap Yamaha beginner trumpets. I had like jazz. I had a, it was, I didn't, I didn't understand yeah. that this is a very high quality trumpet. It just doesn't look as, it doesn't look brand new. Oh, you know? for sure. So it was like, it was a really good trumpet, but I was obsessed with appearances. You know, I'm a middle schooler and it's like, mm-hmm. I'm whipping out this old, trumpet from a beat up case that smelled like an old man and everybody's got these brand new flashy silver ones and nickel and I'm like what's up but and nickel <laughs> but I uh I, I got lucky I had a band director that was like I don't know we got along and he started like he took an interest in me and was like trumpet's great you're good at it you know like I was first chair in our little little band he's like but that's not oh. gonna get you into college you need to learn you need to focus on something so he taught me how to play trombone baritone and then eventually French horn. He's like, if you can get French horn down and you can be good, you don't have to pay for college. And I was like, okay. Uh, but he was like, and, and this is really nerdy. I don't say this much, but he even brought, he was in a British brass band. Are you familiar with that? Like it's no. a bunch of old man, men, like mainly <laughs> retired music teachers that get together and play 
brass oh. music. You know what I mean? Like, and it's like there's trumpets and trombones, but the rest of it is like weird and like E flat horns and <laughs> you know euphoniums and like little tiny tubas and yeah. So I was like, me and my friend, whose name was Spike, he was like in the punk band with me. <laughs> we he played tuba, I played euphonium and mellophone and like all these E flat horns and these weird little you know brass instruments that you never see in yeah. this in this brass band. <laughs> We play That's in hilarious. parks and, and malls during Christmas, playing Christmas carols. And I'm so happy to yeah. know this about you and that we've brought it to light because I feel like the people need to know this. Yeah. But it was weird because these are like old men in khakis and like tucked in <laughs> Oxford shirts and then me in like Jinkos and a Nirvana t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you say you were first chair. So I actually like... <laughs> I feel like we're getting so off topic, but like, okay. So my, I had the opposite experience in band because I, and I, I hate to pull, like, I don't want to be like, Oh, it's because I was a girl, but like, I genuinely okay. feel like this was my first experience as a girl, like kind of dealing with some kind of like, I don't know what the word is. Sexism. Yeah. That's a good word for it. So like, I, I, was so passionate about the trumpet and I played it and I had private lessons and my parents like really encouraged it and everything. And like, you know, I started off with like a rental trumpet and I, as I got into it, they got me, you know, the silver one I wanted and I was like really into it. But the, the guy who was first chair, like never practiced, he did not care about anything. Mm -hmm. And he would always like rub it in my face that he was first chair. And I was always second chair. And like, I realize now, like looking back, like how all of that played out, yeah. was very because that because he was a guy and I remember too when I was choosing my instrument for band because like you know they let you play whatever and then you kind of pick what you want mm -hmm. uh so it was this male music teacher and his wife was also a music teacher and the wife did all the like wooden like the clarinet and all that mm -hmm. um and he did all the brass and he was like trying to get me to do the clarinet and he tried to get me to do the flute and he tried to get me to do percussion and all that. And yeah. I was like, no, I want to play the trumpet. I want to play the trumpet. And <laughs> now I see as an adult, I'm like, oh, yeah, there, there's that definitely might be. some misogyny. In, <laughs> that in might band. be why yeah. he was like that. <laughs> I mean, it was heavily suggested that guys play trumpet, trombone, tuba, uh -huh. like all the brass. And maybe, I was the only girl. And, and girls play flute, clarinet, and saxophone was kind of like the in-between. You can do either yeah. or. Um, yep. <laughs> and that was like, that was how it was. And I remember in high school, I my goal was I was going to be a band director. Like I wanted to be a band <laughs> teacher. So my band teacher in high school was like, to do this effectively, like if you want to do this and go into college on a scholarship, you need to learn to play every instrument. So I'm like learning to play the oboe and the bassoon and the clarinet and the saxophone and <laughs> You know, and it's like, I'm learning all this stuff, but it was kind of like, well, you don't need to learn to play the oboe or the bassoon. Like, those double reed <laughs> instruments, they're they're too difficult. They're, they're mainly for girls. So I'm like, for yeah. girls? Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, that's You can't play the that's flute. That's, sure. that's a girl's. Like, guys don't play flutes. You don't need to worry about that. I'm like, you just told me I need to learn all the instruments, but you're saying, I don't worry about the flute. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God. They so they tried to push that flute on me so bad. Oh, and yeah. I was like, I'm I'm about to pick the baritone or the trombone <laughs> if you keep pushing this on me because I do not want to play the, the flute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun. Like I, I really enjoyed like it, man, it's senior year. That was pretty much all I did. We had like block scheduling. So you only had like four classes a day. They were like an hour and a half long. And mm -hmm. I like my senior year, I had most of my other re prerequisites and stuff done. So it was like marching band for an hour and a half and then orchestra for an hour and a half then show choir for an hour and a half and then they called it what would they call it it was like free practice or something like that. it was essentially you had to go into a little practice room and practice for an hour and a half but i was like mm -hmm. in the band wing like the music wing of this so it was like and i was a big band nerd and, and choir nerd so it was like i just roamed around <laughs> for an hour and a half <laughs> in that wing talking to you know just jamming and playing guitar and whatever like it was it, it was man if i go back to that time of life that was when it was all <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's uh i missed that that's hilarious <laughs> but yeah so that was uh but then I, I graduated and i went to college and i was like i'm gonna be a band director so i was there on a music scholarship i did get a full ride because i was playing french horn um, nice but it was like i kind of experienced some of what you're talking because i was a freshman and I was by far the best French horn player in the band. Like, <laughs> oh no, like embarrassingly so. Like it was because usually the people that played French horn were the ones that couldn't play trumpet very well, and they were like, 
You're really bad at trumpet, so we need some French horns. We'll give you like third chair music. So just that we have French horns in the, you know, in the ensemble. And uh, there was a guy named Joey. I won't say his last name in case there's ever a chance he listens because I don't want to insult him, but he was Joey, turn this off now. <laughs> I was a freshman. He was a senior. I, I was head and shoulders above him in ability, but he still got first chair. And I was so pissed, but he was like, his family was rich. They were you know, uh, big into band boosters. They were close with the band director who had been like the <clears> band director <throat> since the fifties or whatever. He was an old man. So he got first chair. Uh, seniority is what they said. I was like, but I, he can't hit these notes. Like I can play these yeah. notes. And they're like, well, he's first chair. So then we did all state, which is like, there's no politics in that. It's purely based on, um, your skill. Essentially you try out and all that kind of stuff. And I beat him. Like he didn't even make all state and I got first chair. I was like, <laughs> eat it. <laughs> oh God. Oh, it was See, I, I, I didn't have that kind of like revenge, but actually it is funny. The guy who was first chair and was terrible to me like years later, like after, cause that was all happened in like middle school um, when we're like in high school years later, he was like, you know, you really deserved first chair. Like, why didn't you get it and stuff like it? <laughs> so I was like, well, at least like he, he acknowledges now that I should have been first chair this whole time. <laughs> Very cool. So when you got into high school, did you get into photography or video or when did you start like filming and taking pictures of stuff? Like how did that? I actually, God, I wish I still had the footage. I remember bringing my camera to school and making YouTube videos at school, like, and uploading them to YouTube. And at the time also, there was none of this like copyright stuff going on. So I remember like having friends and we would like dance to music and like just do like you know, things high school kids do. It was all super cringy, but like, I would love to look back at all of that. However, I'm pretty sure like I deleted all everything. Nobody go try to find it, but (laughs) I'm sure like it exists. Everybody go try and find it and share it all over the internet. (laughs) There was one video I made. I remember I was like talking about like, Marilyn Manson and at the time he was like a hot topic and people thought he was like satanic and like yeah just I would make the videos about everything I didn't have a genre because YouTube wasn't really that back then it was like you talk about what or you you film and talk about what you want it wasn't an organized like thing you didn't make money really yeah, it um it was just <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't like that at all. It was just like you film and upload thoughtlessly things and it was more of a convenience. Sometimes, it was like, uh-huh. I can't email you this large file and there's not anywhere really to, sh- like you had uploaded to YouTube if you wanted your friends exactly. to see it. Unless you like gave them a floppy disk or something with it on there. Like, yeah, the internet was not yeah. as powerful as it is now. <laughs> it yeah, I was upload. there. I was there for that time. Like, yeah. I mean, I feel like I really grew up on the internet. I like, because of like my age and when the internet hit, like it hit at the perfect time. MySpace hit at the perfect time. I was like, in eighth grade, I think when MySpace come out came out, that was like a prime time. Before that, we did Exanga, um, we had Neopets, we had all of that, you know. And then <laughs> Facebook, when Facebook came on, like you had to be invited to Facebook. And me and all the other little middle schoolers, we had you know an older sibling invite us all so that we could get Facebooks too. And you know, it was a very different time. Okay, and yeah. back when when I would do YouTube videos and stuff like that, it was never thought of like. I'm going to make money and I'm going to get views. And it was not that at all. That was not something that happened. Yeah. <laughs> that makes me feel really old and depressed now. Like, I remember Sorry. when MySpace came out, it was, I was already in the depths of the drug addiction. <laughs> I'm party. sorry. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. What is this? Can I, can I buy drugs off of MySpace? Can I meet people? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Man, I, I don't know. Got into some weird stuff back. Cause I remember, uh, no, I was 18. I was eight, 19, something like that. I, I, I came back from, I was going to school in South Dakota. I came back for the summer uh, to West Virginia. And my friend had moved out of his parents' house and had got a trailer. Like, you know what I mean? Like a crappy trailer that would be in yeah. a trailer park, but it wasn't in a trailer <laughs> park. There was a Dairy Queen off the side of the interstate or the highway. And it was, he was like behind it, <laughs> like in, in a lot behind a Dairy Queen. There was a trailer. <laughs> And that's where he lived. And it was oh great because, you know, we would get stoned and there was a Dairy Queen right outside the door. <laughs> so we would go and get ice cream and hot dogs. <laughs> it was perfect. But we got online and he was ordering all kinds of weird stuff from Pakistan and, and other, you know, the Ukraine. or I don't even know where it was coming from. 
But one of the mm, substances that got delivered once was a bottle of absinthe. And we were so nervous because we were like, other stuff, they don't really, you know, it wasn't alcohol. It wasn't as heavily regulated. They could like sneak it uh, through customs or whatever. I don't know how that worked back then. But I was like, we are going to get busted. This, the mailman's going to ask us to show ID, to prove that we're 21 because it's a little <laughs> liquor. And uh, we were so nervous. And he came, knocked on the door, handed it to us, turned around and walked away. We're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> we're, we're drinking absinthe tonight. <laughs> but yeah, but that was my, that was my, that was the only thing I knew about the internet was he would get on there and find <laughs> stuff for sale to get mailed to us from other countries. And we could download any movie or song we ever wanted. Like, yeah. And, and other horrendous things that I wish I could unsee that we watched. Oh, but, um- Trust me, as like a 12, 13, 14 year old being on the internet back then, I completely understand. (laughs) And like, I have these like memories sometimes where I saw this meme the other day and it was like, I loved being 12 on the internet because I got to play with Neopets and see this guy get beheaded. And I was like, literally (laughs) same. Like, I know. (laughs) Yeah, I'm glad I wasn't 12 when I saw that stuff. (laughs) No, I know. And I remember my parents would be like, what is she? Because my parents had no idea how the internet worked at all. Like they, they got me, they bought me, first of all, like this makes me come off as like, like a total spoiled brat. They bought me a laptop when I was in middle school because I really was into like figuring out how to use a computer and stuff. And they were like completely amazed by it. They were like, what is this thing? You know, she's mm-hmm. so good at it. Like we need to get her one and, and she can learn it and we she can teach us it and stuff like that. So yeah, my parents were always like, what is she doing in her room? Like <laughs> on the computer and like, you know, they couldn't use the phone because I was on the internet all the yeah. time. And they'd be like, what are you doing on the internet at three in the morning? Because they pick <laughs> up the phone and like hear like, Arr! and I'm yeah. like, nothing, I'm doing nothing. Like stop. But then like as adult i'm like damn like i should yeah. not have been <laughs> get on aol chat rooms and <laughs> oh they, yeah what was that oh, yeah. asf or what was it they would it was age asl age sex location they would ask yeah that. oh yeah and ASL. i would just put I would it out always there lie <laughs> oh, i would I always lie i was, I was like 12 smart. and i'd be like uh 24 um <laughs> <laughs> georgia i was so naive i even like had a girlfriend online i met in one of the chat rooms when i was in middle me too school. i had a boyfriend and she sent me, I gave her my mailing address because she wanted to send me uh, her class picture. And it got, came in the mail and my parents were like, hey, you got a letter, which was weird because, you know, I was what, 12, 13? <laughs> <You know? laughs> Who would send me a letter? And it yeah. smelled like girl perfume. And they're like, "Who? what is? So I open it and there's, you know, nice little handwritten letter and a picture of a cute little girl with braces. And my parents are like, who is that? And I explained how I met her on the internet. They're like, you oh. met a stranger on the internet and gave him your phone number? And our, our address, like, and they lost their shit. They're like, this is probably an old man and he's going to molest you. And I'm like, oh, yeah. what? My parents were the same way, except my dad was a homicide detective. So I'm sure oh, you can geez. imagine, yeah. like, he would be like, you know, very, <laughs> very hesitant about that stuff. And I remember when I was in school, we would have like internet safety classes and stuff like that. And I would just like, not like that. It was like dare, like the dare of computer, like stuff, oh, wow, like, don't man. do this. Don't give that. your number. Yeah, we had it. And it was funny because I met so many people online. And to this day, like 15 years later, I still talk to some of them. And they were like, the, they, they are real people. They were who they said they were. Nice. And like when I had like a, you know, Fiona, one of them sent me like all this stuff for her and whatever. It's just crazy that like I met them so long ago yeah. on the internet and they were who they said they were, you know. That's very cool. Worked yeah. out, thank God. <laughs> yeah. No, no incidents there. That's good. Yeah. I, but now it's like the opposite. We need everybody online now. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like <laughs> where the only way my kid interacts with his friends is online, like in mm-hmm. Xbox, you know, live or whatever. It's it's strange, and sometimes I I sound like my dad, like get off, <laughs> turn it off, <laughs> go outside. Yeah. <laughs> well, th- think about it like this. So this is what's crazy. So Fiona is five, and yeah. she has an iPod, and she. Can she literally messages back and forth with like her friends and they're five? Right. They like do voice. They do like voice memos back and forth. They do Snapchat very securely back and forth. They FaceTime all like during COVID the whole time. That's when I got her the iPod is because mm-hmm. she couldn't see her friends or anything. And so like she just like FaceTimes her friends all the time, and it's like completely normal. And they're five. Yeah, I mean, little Rosie, my granddaughter, is two and a half. She'll be three in February. And she knows how to use a. She can't talk very well, but she can use an iPad. Like she yeah. picks it up and can swipe and unlock it and push buttons huh. and open apps. And I'm like, this is crazy. You know, like, you know how long it took me to learn scary. to do this? 
But I mean, when you it's grow scary. up with that technology, it's it's just second nature. It's like we, how we used a phone or a TV or something. It was, it she has like a... Um, it's weird because she has a very... It's such a... I can't even imagine being in her position. I feel like it's so confusing because she has this perception of like the internet and she knows I'm on the internet mm-hmm. and she's like met Pecco. She's met a ton of like people on the, that she's seen on the internet. They've come here and they Mike um, and met her. And she like thinks now that you can, like I can talk to Jojo Siwa or something. And I'm like, I, it doesn't work like that. Like, and she's like, when can Jojo Siwa come over? I'm like, but that's not how it is. And it's like, I don't know how to explain this to her that it's yeah. like, you know what I mean? <laughs> the yeah. other day she was watching Snake Discovery and like I, I just heard the voice in the other room and she loves watching Snake Discovery. I don't think she watches any of our channels besides Snake Discovery. <laughs> so not bitter at all, but she right. loves her. And she was like opening up eggs and stuff and like she loves those. And Diane was actually with Snake Discovery. So I was like, hey, can you get a video for Fiona? And so of course uh, she did it and sent, you know, a little video clip for Fiona saying like, hi, and thank you so much for whatever. And now I'm like, oh, this is just reinforcing this like mindset <laughs> she has that I like do this and I can't, you know, yeah. mom's got connections. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got Coyote Peterson. So, uh, oh, yeah, it was just dumb luck. <laughs> yeah. Well, I- <laughs> no, that was all, uh, that, that was all Mo. <laughs> uh. He hooked me up. But that was like, that was frustrating in a similar way because my kid loves watching Coyote Peterson, does yeah. not like watching my videos. And I was like, Coyote <laughs> yeah. Peterson's coming on. And he's, you know, it's like, I'll watch that one. <laughs> like, thanks a yeah. lot, buddy. Yeah. I'm surprised he didn't ask for like a video or anything. <laughs> yeah. A little cameo, he's, I guess. He's, uh, he's a little too cool for that. He's a little shy, oh. but also kind of like, <laughs> oh, I don't need that. I'm cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's at age. He's turning 13. So, you know, you remember that. You remember what it was like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it was, uh, I, I remember YouTube initially was just, like we would, I was in a band and we would record our shows or practices and we'd upload those to YouTube. And that was like how we shared our music. But it was like, there was no editing. There was nothing. It was like, it, it, was, it went from the camera directly onto the computer, directly online. Yeah. You know, it was like, it was pretty raw. And, and that's like what most videos were, it, it seemed, at least the ones that I watched, skateboarding videos, music videos, um, you know, weird people doing weird stuff that I thought was funny. They were <laughs> so like, and it, this is like part of like, I, first of all, when I watch YouTube, I like to watch videos still that are like that. And it's so weird because, it, and I'm not like knocking anybody, like I do like the more edited stuff that's what I put out is like more edited content and stuff like that. But like mm-hmm. when it comes to like when I'm watching like YouTube channels, I really like it. And that's why I'm embarrassed to say what I watch because I don't, they're just normal like people and normal channels and stuff. And I, it's like hard to explain, but I love that unedited, <laughs> raw, genuine like stuff. Right. And that's what YouTube was. And I feel like YouTube has moved so far away from that. It was Oh, it's just such a different time, you know, and I still mm-hmm. to this day prefer that and that, that I really try to make my content as like genuine and add, like obviously I cut it up and edit it and stuff, but like I try to still keep that relatability, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. you can relate to it better than a more polished thing. And that's why like sometimes I feel like silly because like all my spiders are like right here. I don't have this like big, nice, you know, spider room. But then I'm like, you know what? A lot of people don't. And maybe they relate to that too, you know? Yeah. And so I just like try to like keep it like as genuine and raw as I can, but still not embarrassing like it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's kind of what got me into making tarantula videos is that I enjoyed watching YouTube, but then I, I never really saw it as, you know, making videos like we make, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. uh, it wasn't something somebody could definitely, it wasn't definitely something you could do as a career. <laughs> At least, I mean, that, that wasn't even oh, an no. option for a long time. But it was maybe, I don't know, six or seven years ago. I started watching like Casey Neistat and um, I can't even think of who else at the time. But they were, I mean, they were like, up, they were vloggers, you know, so they're up playing like almost every day, just kind of like mm-hmm. a day in my life. And I, just that voyeuristic aspect of it. I was like, oh, this is a guy who's into making movies and art and he lives in New York. And it's just, it was exciting. And I like to, to kind of get into that, you know, just, just to see what it was like. Cause I never had any desire to live in New York city, but it was cool to see it from somebody else's perspective. 
Yeah. And, and watched that for a while and was kind of enjoying it. And then was seeing these channels that go from a couple thousand or a couple, you know, 10 or 20,000 subscribers to like millions of subscribers and making a lot of money. <laughs> and like, yeah, wow, this, this is a job. But even then I was like, I never, never, I didn't know how to use a camera. You know what I mean? It was like, mm-hmm. I struggled taking pictures with my <laughs> cell phone. Uh, but it was like, I, when I started, my collection started growing. I really, I just, I don't know. It, it was like, it was really a manipulation. Like I could get away with having a lot of tarantulas as far as like my wife was concerned. Like it wasn't an mm-hmm. issue as long as they looked nice. You know what I mean? They were presented nicely. If I just had a mm-hmm. bunch of enclosures stacked up, she's like, all right, this is a problem. You need to stop. <laughs> but if I could present it in a visually appealing way, you know, that yeah. she wouldn't be embarrassed for, you know, people to come over and see them. Then it was, there was, I could get away with having more and more. So that was where it was, and it was like, so then I spent all this money on shelves and lighting and stuff and, and making the enclosures as nice as possible. It was like, I got to do something with this. <laughs> you know, it was yeah. Like, and it was kind of like that real, like this would kind of be cool, uh, like backdrop or topics for yeah. YouTube videos. And, but even then, I didn't think it, I, would, I would ever make money at it. That was never a, a goal, really, I guess. And now you do it full time. That's true. So you started that same way too. It was more like, I just want, to show people what I have, like to share my experience and, and knowledge. Yeah. I mean, not going to lie. I wanted to be like Pecco. Like I thought he was so cool. I mean, he's okay. You know, he's not that cool, but I thought he was so cool <laughs> and I wanted to be, you know, like him. And, um, you know, I had, I was already, it wasn't like I started YouTube and then I suddenly was like, I'm going to get all these animals. It was like, uh, I had already a lot of animals when I started. I had always had a lot of animals. And then since I started my YouTube journey so early on in my tarantula keeping journey, mm-hmm. you've kind of seen me like grow within, you know, the past few years of like becoming a more experienced YouTuber, becoming a more experienced animal keeper. And my collection obviously has grown, yeah. um, not because of YouTube, but because I got more and more into this hobby that it just they grew alongside each other yeah. and um, it's worked out really well. And to the point, like I do this like full time and it's, it's really like a bizarre thing because it doesn't feel like a job, but it does, but it doesn't, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like a weird thing, but yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't the goal. It's just what happened. And like, I, I had mentioned to you privately before, like when I decided to do this full time, it wasn't really a decision that I made. It was just kind of happening. And so like, Briefly, after Fiona was born, I did work a part-time retail job. But what ended up happening um, was that Eric got like sick. So uh, for those maybe who don't know that are listening, Eric has... um, He's now diagnosed with something called psoriatic arthritis, which is similar to like rheumatoid arthritis. Yeah. So, um, back after like Fiona was born and I, you know, I stayed home with her and then I decided I'll get a little part-time job to kind of, you know, help. And so Eric would work all day and then I would go work when he would come home. So we'd pass her off. So she never, you know, we didn't need a babysitter or childcare. So I was doing that for a while. And then suddenly one day, Eric couldn't really even walk. Like it literally, it came out of nowhere. Like every single joint in his body swelled and they were all like red and swollen. And I like, I literally had to lift his legs to help him get into bed. And he was in all of this pain. And like, it was the most pain I had ever really seen him in. And, you know, we had no idea what was going on. So I, I ended up calling off of work like all week. And I was afraid to like leave him home by himself. We didn't know what was going on. He, you know, he had an appointment to get seen by a doctor. Um, but it, we had to wait a little bit. And so at that point, when I started calling off work because I didn't want to leave him by himself and I didn't want to obviously leave a baby with him on top of it, sure. I just was like, you know, okay, well, let me weigh things out. I was, I had just hit 10,000 subscribers on YouTube when that happened. And I mean, I wasn't really making much at all, but it was about the same I was making part time at where I was at. So I was like, well, what if I just stop working there and I just only do YouTube because I'm pretty much making the same there anyway, Mm -hmm. Um, which wasn't anything that significant, but it was just enough, you know? And it was like, okay, well, if I can make more videos a week, which I can do on my own time, that makes more sense than that. So it was like not intended. It just happened, Mm -hmm. but it... It's it happened at such the right time when it needed to happen. Yeah, yeah, it's similar to my story because yeah. it was like a. I mean, I was working for my friend. I enjoyed the job. I, I don't. Know, maybe it's because I'm kind of antisocial, but it's like <laughs> you. Sp- 
spend enough time with someone, even if you really like it when you're seeing each other eight, 10 hours a day, five, mm-hmm. six days a week, it doesn't matter how much you like them. You start to kind of get on each other's nerves. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. it was, uh, I, I, I enjoyed the work. He was, he's still a friend, uh, but it was just like, there was resentments were starting to get, to start, you know, to develop. <laughs> it was just, mm-hmm. like, we're in each other's face all the time. And, you know, it, and it, it, I mean, I don't want to get into the whole politics of that, but it was just the two of us working in this business he started. And I was going to, you know, it was like in the transition of becoming a partner. So it was like the two of us were going to own it. And mm-hmm. there was, you know, we were kind of button heads about what direction, because he was wanting to get like into, um, uh, we had an FFL. So we were a federally licensed firearm dealer, but we didn't really, it was just like we had it. So we could occasionally buy and sell guns like at estate sales and stuff like that. Cause we did a lot of auctions and, and things of that nature. So we just did it initially just to have the ability to do it legally. But then he wanted to like get into other more advanced, like machine guns and, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, silencers and stuff. I'm like, I don't really want to do that. Like, I don't want, I'm, yeah. Um, and then COVID came and, you know, business mm-hmm. dropped off and it was like, I, just from my past, you know, it was always like, you got to have multiple hustles, multiple sources of income. Yeah. Because, I mean, and a lot of it was just because I was partying so hard. I knew that I could not count on having a steady job because I would inevitably show up high or hungover and get fired. You know, and it was like, that was just, so I always had multiple hustles. Sometimes they weren't very legal, but they were sources of income I could rely upon. Yeah. If shit hit the fan. So you hear that cops, any cops listening? <laughs> oh, they, trust me, they Come already know. They already we know. We got them boys. We got them boys. <laughs> already been to court for those. <laughs> that's, that's one thing. Excuse me while I, I'm going to look that up. Yeah. Just never <laughs> Google my name. Like that's, that's like one of, that's why I was talking to you the other day about SEO, <laughs> like search engine <clears throat> and optimization. Oh, yeah. A lot of that was to bury stuff. <laughs> it's like, now you search my name. It's all tarantula collector for like, Five, six oh, pages God. deep into Google search, but you go deep enough, <laughs> you'll, find, <laughs> you'll find some other parts about Richard. <laughs> oh my God. A little embarrassing. Cut but. this out. Edit it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Expose yourself. <laughs> yeah. But that's kind of why I sometimes talk about it openly because it's like, then there, there can't be a scandal. I've already owned it. <laughs> you know? Like, Oh my God. I literally have never even thought about looking that up or would, would I even care? Like, Yeah. I dated a girl once in, in the midst of addiction. And the first thing she said to me was like, please don't ever Google my name. So that was the first thing I did. <laughs> I was of like, course. Yeah, no, we can't, we can't see each other anymore. <laughs> you got busted for prostitution three times. <laughs> like, Do you ever Google um, like the Tarantula Collective and like look at like what comes up? Oh, like yeah. the suggested, like if you go to Google, there's like a suggested bar. Cause I just want to see something. Let me, let me see if I can do this. This I'll look up mine. Okay. I just, just want to show you this. Let me show you this really quick. So if you type in tarantula cat into Google, things come up, right? So I noticed this. Um, it's like tarantula cat, tarantula cat merch, tarantula cat, real name, location, age, enclosure, feet, brown recluse. What? Who's looking that up? Who is looking that up? Tarantula cat feet? <laughs> That's disturbing. <laughs> it used to be like tarantula cat husband, but I guess people stopped Googling that. Now they're Googling. Um, yeah, go go type in the tarantula collective I and am. see what suggests it comes up. <laughs> uh, not, not feet. <laughs> Amazon storefront, green bottle blue, YouTube store resource, podcast, care sheets, tarantula collective Richard and tarantula collective enclosures. Nobody, interesting. Nobody cares about my Very feet. Very interesting. <laughs> I'm going to go to Google and I'm just going to type in the tarantula collective feet and like keep hitting it. So that <laughs> Nobody wants to see my feet, cat. <laughs> don't, don't wish that upon anyone. <laughs> I feel like you could probably, I mean, obviously there's demand for your feet out there. Maybe. I be, uh... am not kink shaming at all, but I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, 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 I know. I, I think I'm picking up what you're throwing down. Are you saying yeah. that you send <laughs> pictures of your feet to Tom Patterson in exchange I for spiders? I do not. Oh, my God. Tom <laughs> Tom, literally. <laughs> no, Tom. Oh, my God. Don't bring him into this, Richard. <laughs> He's a good guy. <laughs> no, every time you say his name, though, he gets excited. Every time I say it, if you, anybody says his name in a video, he's like so happy about it. So the, let's not give him that. Okay. We won't talk about Tom Patterson at all or, you know, but we, yeah. <laughs> Tom Patterson hates your guts on Instagram. Don't follow him. I know. <laughs> He's the worst. You know, he made me cry. I, I think I saw that thumbnail. 
he he made well no he that that was a little you know a little clickbait which I mean I was very happy there were tears but no he like legitimately made me cry my oh, first wow. interaction with him on the internet in like a group because you know how he is I, I posted um I got a captive bred a phone of Pelma Hensi mm-hmm. and a, a female she's she was like four years old when I got her she's like six now. So I got her and I was so excited and I posted in a group and I was like, finally got my dream tarantula, a female phone of because I wanted one so bad. I wanted a captive bred one. I wanted a female and I wanted that species because they're local, you know, and I was very excited. Okay. And Tom like made fun of me for <laughs> saying it was like a dream species and like no called way. it like a shit brown spider and he was so mean and I didn't even know him and I remember like crying about it <laughs> <laughs> like and that was my first time I met him oh wow it yeah. doesn't sound like Tom at all he's, he's always so no friendly no of course not <laughs> he's the worst well what's funny though I met him at um the fear not tarantula meetup thing yeah we had there in Virginia Beach and I you know I've seen how he he acts online and I was interested because sometimes you know people act one way online, but then you meet him in person and that's not how they are. You know what I mean? Yeah. With him, that was how he was, but like he still had that dry wit, sarcastic kind of humor. But when yeah. you, when in person, you can see his facial expression. You know what I mean? You can uh-huh. like, you can see the, the shitting eating grin or you know what yeah. I mean? Like it's you can tell. Dorky. Yeah. You know, I know. I know. Oh my God. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, it's so funny. Uh, I think it's like, I think that's what a lot of people who get upset by him. Like, well, if, if you saw him in person, I mean, he's a Gen X kind of, you know, he definitely has Gen X vibes very strongly. Yeah. yeah. And I don't even know why we talk. I don't know how we get along at all. Like we don't <laughs> get along at all. Actually, to be clear, put that on a record. We are not friends. <laughs> It's so noted, <laughs> but yeah, I uh, I think is a, a lot of stuff online. You know, when people are leaving comments and things, there's that that anonymity or like that that faceless, like it's just text. So mm-hmm. it, it really is dependent on my mood. Like if I'm stressed out or angry <laughs> or just sad or whatever mood I'm in, I infer that now's into not the people's time, comments. Tom. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. it's like. Yeah, whether it's Tom or just anybody that leaves a random comment, like there's been people that left comments on my videos that I got really defensive about and like shot yeah. off of my mouth and like, whoa, dude, like I didn't mean that. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my bad. That's my shit. That's on me. <laughs> like I, oh, I yeah. implied stuff that you didn't mean. <clears throat> but then there are other times people are going out of their way just yeah. to kind of be a dick. And I feel like I know. you get that more. And I think that's kind of enigmatic. Enigmatic. How, I can't speak. Enigmatic. I don't even know if that's the right word. I shouldn't. I don't know what's happening. What are you saying? (laughs) I'm (laughs) I'm trying to sound really fancy. Can you Uh, spell it? (laughs) Enigmatic. E n i g i g m a t i c. What should not even be? Oh, that okay. Difficult to interpret or understand. Yes. Serious. I learned a new word. I I learned a new word today. (laughs) (laughs) But it's. I. I feel like it's. It's because you're a female. You know what I mean? You're a female content creator in a niche that I don't know. It like stereotypically is more of a male thing. Like I think maybe the seventies, eighties and nineties, tarantulas and and scorpions and snakes, exotic pets were predominantly Mm -hmm. guys. You know what I mean? Like, like weird dudes (laughs) in high school that, you know, were goth or whatever metal and had a tarantula. So seeing a young female talking about it, I think offends some people's sensibilities or stereotypical mindsets, and you are just assumed to be an idiot. That sounded really yeah. rude. Well, but I've, no, it's true. I'm not but, saying you are, but I, I I feel like I've seen people treat you that way. I feel that way a lot. Like, okay, I only say what I know, and if, or I'll say something, and I'll be like, I'm not sure, but you know, like I only say what I know, which is not a lot. I'm going to be completely transparent. I'm not like some pro you know, whatever. But sometimes I feel like I have to make what I'm, my argument or what I'm saying more believable by bringing like Martin, you know, bird spider CH. Yes. Well, he's, you know, a guy, but he also is like, um, an arachnologist or right. like I had to bring Rick Vetter's book into, you know, proving my point for Brown recluse and stuff like that. Um, like I, sometimes I feel like I have to seek out like a male opinion or a male like fact to like make what I'm saying, like, get through to some 
somebody. Yeah. And that, so that's a little frustrating, like, I guess, but man, you should like, it wasn't until like a year or so after I made like that jungle Bob video, like correcting him, there is some very mean, like she's a bitch, you know, comments <laughs> from like guys, you know, that are like very, like taking a lot of offense to like what I was saying and like, how dare she correct him? Like, you know, he, he knows all this and he's this and that, and he's done this and that. And like, you know, who is she? and whatever and stuff. I'm like, God, like, you know, it's a fair point. Who am I? But still like, not nice. Like, yeah, that doesn't mean just because he is as a larger following or a larger platform that he's right. Like everything you said in that video, I watched that video. Like you were right. Like he, he, that wasn't bad. I don't even want to say it was bad. It was just old information. Like I remember. That's exactly my point. When that was, that, that was good information at the time. When I got my first tarantula, that was like what I was going off of is, Right. But yeah, it, it 100%. But like, like guys like took it as like an attack like me like who who's this younger girl like what does she know and stuff right. like that and you know okay I will be very transparent I am not a professional. I've literally never have claimed to be I don't claim to be educational. I'm just going to say what I know and show what I'm doing and that's about it, you know. Yeah. I mean I but, tell people damn. all the time like I'm a college dropout that <laughs> a recovering <laughs> drug addict and uh I have an unhealthy obsession with collecting and keeping tarantulas and other exotic pets. I'm just sharing my experience and I am not, but it's like, I think it's the beard, you know, it's like people (laughs) see the beard and just assume authority. And they're like, well, Richard said that like, wait a minute. Richard is not a reliable source of information. (laughs) Yeah. No, I I mean, I did not go to school for this. So it do be that way sometimes though, but but I think it's, I mean, because it's not just, and, and, and I, I don't know, it, it's just, and I think that's the only thing I can figure out. Because when I had the beard, I didn't get that, or when I didn't have a beard, when I was like clean shaven or just had like the goatee, nobody took me seriously. <laughs> but it's like, I grew a big beard and now people are like, hey, that guy knows what he's talking about. Like he must. <laughs> so I, maybe that's what you need. You need a beard. You get If you get a beard trench like that, you're going to be on top of things. It's not so just- So grow a beard? Is that your advice? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay, but All right, I'll work on it. I don't think it's just you though. Like I have seen this. Hey, that, see, you already seem a lot wiser. I right, thank you. I ugh. for those listening, she just wrapped her hair around her face and has a beard think, longer like, than mine. I for real look like you, right? Yeah, I, I can't tell the difference right now. <laughs> I know you definitely do look a lot wiser. And thanks. You have I a really tried mouthful of hair. <laughs> I know, but I've seen Tastes that like chemicals. <laughs> Man, reading the comments of some of like Deadly Tarantula Girls videos, like I don't always agree with what she has to say, but a lot of times the comments have absolutely nothing to do with the content of her video. And Can I literally, are, literally, a hundred percent? I just want to say, so like when I first started like making videos, um, and I befriended some other people who other creators, other people that had been in the hobby longer, mm-hmm. they would badmouth her to me all the time, and I. I honestly kind of fell into it, like thinking what they were saying and, and like they would say things like, I don't know, they, they, they'd hate on her care or whatever. And, but then they'd be like, oh, look, she's wearing this or look, she's wearing that. And I just kind of be like, yeah, what, yeah, okay. Well, they'd be like, oh, she's doing it for views or she's, you know, that's why people are subscribed to her and stuff like that. And then like, as a female creator myself, I'm like, does it really work like that? Is it okay to like sit there and say like, she's only has like this many subscribers because of what she's wearing. Mm -hmm. And then like, as I've like grown on YouTube, like I've experienced it myself. And it's funny because I don't talk to those people anymore to be clear, because I realized like the negativity that was like coming from that. And yeah, Yeah. but I remember distinctly one of them had said to me, um, before I kind of cut off all ties, they were like, you know, you're only putting yourself in your thumbnails to attract male attention. And that's why your, your channel's growing so much more than, than ours, because you're a female and you're putting yourself on your thumbnail. Wow. And I remember like thinking they, they called it, the person called it cheap. And I was like, okay, well, I just put myself on my thumbnail because they're my videos and I'm in my videos. Right. <laughs> so like, it, that's not like why I was putting myself in my thumbnail to like attract males. Um, I was just doing it because they're my videos. And now when you see it, you see my face and you associate it with my channel and you know 
what you're clicking on. That's basic like, logic. I can follow. <laughs> right. And so, yeah, like as a fem- female creator, like the more I've grown and the more I've like heard like people like say things about like deadly tarantula girl and other female creators and yeah. like criticize what they're wearing or this and that. I'm just like, you know, it's not really like fair. Like maybe we shouldn't like be doing that. Right. Possibly. I mean, like not. when I read through my comments, the only time anybody discusses my appearance is like, they're saying nice beard or nice. I like your sheet, your t-shirt. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> that's the extent of it. Uh, I got sick there for a while. Like I'm, I'm getting better now, but I, I was, it was getting really bad <laughs> about a year ago. And people were like, Hey, you're losing weight and you're really yellow around the eyes. And that's when I was like, maybe I should go to a doctor. Cause I can see that yeah. too. But yeah. So it like, that was it. But that was more of a, from a place of concern. You know, they're like, right. something's not right with you, man. We're watching you uh, degrade uh, every other video. But yeah. then I like, I mean, I mean, you just had, had a great example of you, tarantula cat feet is one of the first suggestions on Google. And it's like, uh, but not it's, kink shaming, not kink shaming. <laughs> but Making it's like, clear. uh, you know, deadly tarantula girl, pet rock and roll. Um, I mean, there's, there's a lot of female creators out there and not yeah. just in the, I don't even think it's as bad in the arachnid hobby as it is in the reptile hobby. Oh, but it's like, not at they all. just get slaughtered and it's like, they, they don't even take into consideration the content or what they're saying or the quality of the videos or their personality. It's just reduced to, well, you're a female and you wore a tank top and that's the only reason you're popular. And it's like, yeah, well, there was that recent like controversy over that too. Like, what was that, that about? That, I didn't even, like, I just kind of <clears throat> caught the tail end of that. was like, well, what's um, going on? Some, like, YouTuber, I'm not familiar with them or anything, but, like, I saw the meme that was posted by them. It was um, a meme where it was, like, a girl, and she, like, it was, like, when a girl needs more likes or something on her post, and it was, like, obviously, like, her, like, exposing herself, like, holding, like, a reptile. So that's why, like, I guess all the girls took it and, like, you know, took racy photographs with their animals and stuff mm-hmm. um, to kind of protest it, which <laughs> maybe that was their plan all along. I don't know. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like there was definitely some backlash there for that. But I don't like really keep like, I'm not into like keeping like uh, a lot of reptiles or anything. Like I'm very content with what I have besides frogs. I need more frogs. I always need more frogs. Mm-hmm. But like I see, especially with like snakes and like ball python morphs and stuff like that. That is like a whole nother ball game. And there's like lots of competition. And it seems like there's like a lot of females that get kind of like run over by a lot of other people in that the hobby, in my opinion, anyway, from what I've seen on the outside. Yeah. So I don't know. They get nasty in those ball python groups. <laughs> Man, I've never been in one, but I've heard stories. So <laughs> yeah. After we got a ball python, I started joining a bunch of them, trying to like, you know, just learn like we did our research but it's i mean you can always learn more and mm-hmm. there was a lot of aspects of it that i didn't understand it's like especially when you're talking about like uh the spider gene and you know there's some of the, yeah. a lot of these different morphs and and i was like i want to learn more about this and then it was it just there was so much infighting and hate and nastiness and That's i got i just like asked a question in one group and they kicked me out and i'm like all right <laughs> like i guess we're not even allowed to uh to discuss yeah. this topic like it so, uh, you know, and that's, I mean, we only have one ball python. I'm not like huge into it or anything. And it's technically my wife's. So it's Yeah, like, we only have one too. Yeah, you know, it was. It, well, we only have space for one because I have a 40 gallon. Mine's nice. in a 40 gallon. I know that like there's a, a big like debate on like racks and stuff like that. Do you, mm-hmm. What do you use? Do you use a. Yeah, I don't use racks. I just. Uh, yeah. I've got both my king snakes. I got Cali and an Eastern king snake and they're in 40 yeah. gallons. And then nice. my ball python is. We got him. He was very young. So he's only in a 20 gallon right now. But that's that makes like, more sense though, because they're not very active yeah. and the king snakes are very active. Yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, I'm actually getting ready to move him though into a 40 gallon, like front opening yeah. uh, enclosure because nice. he's on the top shelf. He's actually like right behind me. This one oh. right up here. And nice. It's like, oh, I love that setup. Yeah, him. it's a nice little bioactive. I, I like, ah. I like it a lot, but it's, Really, do, I mean, you, it's like on the top. And these are big shelves, so I have like a little stool behind me. I got to stand on top of just to open up the enclosure That's, and feed them. I have a stool too. Yeah, and <laughs> it's not good because like my hand, you know, going over the top and down in it. It's really uncomfortable, mm-hmm. and I mean, it's it's like this. It just isn't practical, you know. So I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a bioactive for mine. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have to hit you up to talk a little bit more in depth about that. So I don't yeah. have to go to a ball python group and get 
kicked out for asking a question. <laughs> I think <laughs> but no, that, that is why I got awesome. kicked out because I was I was asking if anybody had used the Bio Dudes Bioactive Kit, and and they're like, "Get out of here! <laughs> we, uh, we keep our ball pythons on paper towels." <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, Aspen that's the thing. Oh. No, that's so bad. That's what we kept ours on at first when yeah. we didn't know any better. And we kept her on Aspen and she had like a couple like pretty rough sheds. Like she didn't get it all off and we had a soaker and do all of that. And then like it was actually, this is what's so helpful. I actually had like subscribers be like, hey, you shouldn't keep her on Aspen because it's you know going to be too drying for her. Switch to this. So I switched it and I haven't had a bad shed with her since. So thank you there subscribers you with constructive criticism. You yeah. guys come through, you know, sometimes there, like I definitely appreciate cons constructive criticism or ways that I can improve <laughs> my animals. I will listen and I do listen, but yeah, we kept her on that. And like looking back now, I'm like, Oh, like, duh. Like, yeah, I think it was similar. When I first brought her home, I had her set up on, and I had all my snakes on Aspen, but the King snakes, it wasn't that big of a deal. And I think yeah. I got that from snake discovery. I think it was Emily. I was watching some of her videos um, before we got the king snakes, and that's what she was keeping them on at the time. Or I, I could be completely lying; it may have been somebody <laughs> else. But I feel I like know. that was because my wife really likes her channel as well. And and we actually we were at it was the first time we went to NARBC or the second time I don't remember, but they were in front of us in line at the hotel to check in. And I was trying to explain to my wife that's the girl you like from Snake Discovery, but I also like didn't want to be a douche. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like oh, a little fangirling. I I was like, oh, I doubt she would have thought that. No, no, but I wanted to respect their privacy because they had, I, I, mean, I don't know how long they had just driven, but they looked tired and it was late and I was tired and they weren't even at the right hotel. They were supposed to be checking at the hotel next door. So they were, you know, it was just kind of an embarrassing, awkward mm. moment. And I'm like, I'm not going to bother them. <laughs> And then like somebody oh. else got out of line and bothered him. I was like, well, I guess I could have said hi. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. So it was um it, it we kept the king snakes on the aspen, no problems. But the ball python, same thing happened. It its first yeah. shed with us was real bad. And mm -hmm. soaked it, tried to, you know, put in a larger water dish. The next shed was also bad. And somebody was like, Maybe you should, you know, keep them on uh, cocoa fiber or some some other kind of substrate that was yeah. that could have a little more moisture. And I did that, took care of the problem. And then I yep. was like, well, how about a bioactive? Like, I mean, I'm, I like bioactive enclosures. So I was like, I'll try that. And that's when people were like, no, you're a bad person. But I was like, if Josh is, or not Josh's frogs, bio dude is selling it, then it's got to be, you know, possible. Like, I don't think they would sell something and market it that way if it was dangerous. And I'd seen other people, I think uh, maybe SERP design or there's some other YouTubers that were keeping theirs bioactive. So I was like, I'll try it out. And I've not had, a, a, it eats a lot better. Uh, it sheds better and it's out of its hide a lot more now that it has like That's awesome. growing plants and stuff that sometimes it's awesome. Sometimes it means I'm going to get bit because I don't see it. <laughs> Mine <laughs> hasn't bit hide. me. <laughs> oh, he's bit me like three or four times at this point. And it's never no, malicious. No, my corn snakes do that. No, yeah. I know because they, they think it's, yeah. And it's always when I'm That's how all the snakes like, are. That's, I stick the, so, I stick the yeah. mouse in there and I and I don't know he's in this bush or yeah. hiding up. So I, I run it right by his face and then stick my hand in front of his mouth and that's when he bites. <laughs> that's how all the snakes are because Eric feeds them. So he's yeah. the one, like whenever they like see, like I not really see, but whenever he's interacting with them, they associate him with food, I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> and then when it comes to me, like I, I do all the handling with them. I've made them all very handleable. So all nice. of my snakes, you can pull them out. You might get nipped by the corn snakes uh, at first if they don't realize when you stick your hand in there. But yeah. like all my snakes are very handleable. Uh, thanks to me, but Eric is the one who feeds them. So they, I feel like are like, oh, it's you. Give yeah. me food or I'm going to eat your hand. <laughs> Nola, our king snake is just a sweetheart. It's like, uh, she's intelligent. I don't know what is, I mean, she's, she's got a great personality. So I just open up the enclosure and what, sometimes she's out in the open doing her thing. Other times she's hidden, but it's like, I open the enclosure and she just kind of slowly wriggles out, sticks her head up. <laughs> and it's like, I am totally cool to come and, and hang out. You know, I, I want you to handle me. So, you know, we pull her out and handle her. She's always, I never, she's never bitten me. Always been, she bit my wife. Why? Because we got her in ARBC and she's like mm -hmm. checking him out. And she was very small or not very small, but she was a lot smaller than she was is now. And the guy was like, uh, they can be a little nippy. She was like, oh, she's a sweetheart. And as soon as she said that, bam, latched right onto her <laughs> finger. But I mean, it was just a little tiny king snake bike. It didn't even draw blood. Yeah. It'd be like a one drop of blood or something. It was, but that almost made her more endearing to my wife. She was like, oh, I like her. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, but yeah, the king snake, he's, or not the king snake, the, the Cali king, 
is a little more, I, I wouldn't say food aggressive. I don't think that's even the right term, but it's like, I open up the enclosure and he's just like all of a sudden, not even defensive. He's just like, it's time to eat, you know? So it's like, <laughs> I gotta, gotta like convince him. I don't have any food. I'm just taking you out to clean your cage or, you know, to handle you or something. Uh, he'll, he'll calm down pretty quickly, but that, yeah, he's, he's got me a few times, but it's never bad. But that, that ball Python, he's just, he's, he's just dopey. Like, I don't know. He just, it's just not yeah. a very intelligent snake. He's just like, mm. I, yeah, same. <clears throat> But yeah, so like I'm, I'm going to take all those plants and everything out of that enclosure. And, uh, I got, I got a front opening. I actually bought the front opening enclosure to put all my scorpions in. Cause I was, they're just, they're growing really slow, like the desert scorpions mm-hmm. and they weren't molting very quickly. I, I, I don't know. It just, they weren't eating well. And uh, from just doing a lot of research, it was like, I, I th- it may have even been Petco. One of his videos, he was talking about moving some of his desert, desert scorpions on a shelf with a higher heat and they started to thrive a lot more. And I was like, well, I'm going to yeah. try that. But I didn't, I mean, so I, I got an enclosure and, and set up a thermostat to regulate a heat lamp and keep it about 10 degrees warmer than the rest of the room. And they've, they've become a lot more active. Uh, so I was like, this is working, <clears throat> but this is like a $250 enclosure that's just sitting here to keep these scorpions warm. Yeah. And my ball python would, it would be much, like, I didn't, I didn't want to go out and buy another one, you know? So I was like, I'm right. going to put them in something else and use this for the ball python. And then, like, that guy at Peco was like, hey, I got this Exoterra, you know, sell to you for 50 bucks. And I was like, perfect. That will, that's great. Uh, that'll now be the, the desert setup for scorpions. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's, but it's, I made this video, like I, like I told you before we started recording, I just got that shipment in with a bunch of bioactive substrates and springtails and isopods and plants and four poison dart frogs. And they're patiently waiting to go into their new house. And and I've spent a lot of time building that enclosure behind me. Oh yeah. 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 It's, um, I, oh, I'm, that's, so that's going to be theirs. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that's cool. what I, I got in Morgantown at that pet shop. Cause I was trying, I was doing a lot of research on dart frog enclosures and like, they got to be like almost a hundred percent humidity. They're yeah. Very sensitive. They're intimidating. It was actually mm-hmm. Dion. Uh, I was watching, I mean, I watched hours of videos. <laughs> like, I really wanted yeah. to not screw this up because dart frogs are something I've wanted since I was a child. You know what I mean? It was mm-hmm. like, they weren't, they weren't available, but I would see them, like pictures of them, <laughs> you know, in books and stuff. Like, oh, those are awesome. I want those. And then it was like, when I started keeping tarantulas and stuff, I started seeing them at expos and, and was like, I really want them. They started showing up at the low, like at Petco, <laughs> you know, at Pet Supplies Plus and, these chain stores, but they never really like looked healthy. And in my mind, it was always like they are high maintenance and very fragile. And I don't know what I'm doing. I don't want to kill them. So I just shied away. Yeah. And it wasn't until I talked to uh, Dan from uh, Amphibicast. Man, I hope that's his. I think it's Dan. I know him by Amphibicast. But he came on the podcast and like that's all he does is dart frogs. And really kind of opened my mind. Like if you just get the husbandry right, like build the enclosure correctly, they'll thrive. They're very easy. And I was just like, really? But then it was like, where am I going to get them from? Can I afford it? Because I mean, once I switched from working and doing YouTube to just doing YouTube, I had saved mm-hmm. up some money. So I had like a six month kind of runway, four to six month. And it's it's been dwindling quickly. <laughs> it's yeah. Like, I'm almost oh, yeah. completely exhausted my savings and I'm going to be relying 100% on YouTube revenue. And uh, yeah. it's, it's scary. And I was like, scary. I, I, I can't. I can't afford to do it really. And then I got this opportunity from Houston frogs. They're like, we, we've heard you say you wanted them. We'll send you some, make a video on it. And they pretty much were like, we'll get you everything but the enclosure. Cause that's just too difficult to ship. Hard to ship. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, I can handle that. I can get an enclosure. And I was doing all this research and decided I was going to go with like a 20 gallon, 18 by 18 by 18, or maybe even like uh, 12 by 18 by 36. You know what I mean? I was like looking at all mm-hmm. these different and trying to figure out how to, seal up so there's ventilation but very little so it would keep the humidity in there and i don't know so i was watching all these videos and i came across Rip- reptiliatus his latest video on his dart frogs and he yeah. got these uh dart frog enclosures like enclosures but made by exoterra specifically for dart frogs <clears throat> they sent them to him you know what i mean like they hooked him up with yeah. the dart frog and the tree frog yeah he's and, got an awesome thing going on with them yeah and i was like that is <laughs> Amazing, and it's like specifically built for dart frogs, so I can't screw this up. I'm gonna buy one, and I get on Amazon. No one's selling them. I, I go to Petco, PetSmart, Pet Supplies Plus, Chewy, Value Pets. I mean, everywhere I could think of, 
nobody had him for sale except for was it LLL Reptile. What is that? Triple L Reptile or something like that? I don't um, know. They had them, but it was like, I don't know, like a 200 bucks or something like that for the enclosure. But because it was an enclosure, there was a man, like it was $100 shipping. I was like, it's like $300 for an enclosure. I've got 18 by 18 by 18. It would be cheaper to just rehouse something out of that and custom, you know, make the modifications yeah. to an existing enclosure. And it would be the more phys- physically responsible thing to do. <clears throat> and then I was like, well, maybe somebody around here. So I started calling all the local pet shops, like in Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Akron, Columbus, like, you know, anywhere within like a couple hours drive. Nobody had them until I called that place in Morgantown. And it was, it was almost like, I'm, we're going there anyways. I know there's one exotic pet shop there. Just, it was, it was, it was just like a, a Hail Mary. Like, um, yeah. And, and she's like, actually, yeah, we just got a couple in. I'm like, are you for That's real? awesome. Very lucky. Aside, I want those. And uh, I mean, I only got one, but they were like, we've got the tree frog and the dart frog. And it's only $10 more for the tree frog one. And I'm like, the, but then I'm spending $300 and I couldn't afford that. <laughs> like, yeah, I feel you. You know, you should really hit up um, Zen Habitats if you haven't heard of them. They're really great about working with creators and supplying like enclosures and stuff. And like, I've got my bearded dragon enclosure from them. I love it. It's so much better because I used to have them in that 40 gallon and then I Uh switched into that. And seriously, you should check them out if you, if you haven't. I like the name. Yeah. Zen Habitat. Habitat. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I reached out. I'm not shame. I'm I'm shameless. I guess (laughs) I'll say that. Not shameless. I'm just. There's no. You Entrepreneurial. So. You know what I mean? Right. like. Yeah. Like I, I am going to be using your enclosure anyways, so you could help me out and I will advertise yeah. your product. But uh-huh. if not, I'm going to use it and I'm purposely not going to say crap about you. <laughs> <laughs> not really. But, so I was like, uh, I reached out. I, I think I've reached out to Zilla Zumed and Exoterra. And we're like, hey, this is what I'm doing. This is my channel. This is what I need. Can we work something out? And I feel like both Zilla and Exoterra just completely ignored me, which is understandable. And Zoomed mm. was actually like, um, we won't send you enclosures because <laughs> that's too expensive. Uh, we'll send you some like fake plants and some substrates and uh, substrates and um, lights and what did they send something? A waterfall kit for like a bioactive. I'll be pretty much everything I needed for the paludarium. They hooked me up with all nice. of that. Nice. I was like, this is very cool and kind of set up a relationship. But then it's like, it, it turns into that situation. I think Casey Neistat said it the best. It was like, is the juice worth a squeeze? Like, yeah, you're getting these items for free, but what they want in return is not always comparable. You know what I mean? Like uh-huh. They want you, they're going to send you like a couple hundred dollars worth of product, but they want a couple thousands dollars worth of time, effort, and promotion in exchange. I mean, that's a little right. exaggeration, but sometimes it's like what you want in exchange or what you're giving me is, is not worth it. So it's not free. Nothing's yeah, I free. feel that. People leave comments like, man, I wish I could get free enclosures. It's like, it's not free. <laughs> no, there's it's an expectation literally... that comes with that. And I have to, uh, you know, or not just me, you as well. You got to perform. And if you're not sending business their way, they're, they're not going to send you anything else. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of which, use cat uh, code cat10 at tarantulacribs.com uh, and get 10% off your order. <laughs> just so you know, she lied to you. You actually pay 10% more. <laughs> If, oh, you cat use 10, cat 10. You, uh, if you use Cat 10, if you use T Collective 10, you definitely get 10% off. <laughs> mm, sorry, I didn't hear that. Tarantula, uh, just Cat 10 at tarantulacruise.com. Thank you. <laughs> it's a battle of the affiliate links. <laughs> yeah, so I'm excited once we get off here, which we will have to do in a few. I am going to set up that enclosure and rehouse or like move these these cool guys in. I am, I'm really excited. Ready? Some I'm frogs. Found- some dark some frogs. frog stuff. Yeah. And I'm going to yeah. do some frog stuff too. We're both doing frog stuff after yeah. this. So what kind of frog did you get? Um, I So I've been on the hunt for a, a horned brown Pac-Man frog and I have not been able to find one. I found some adults, but they were wild caught. And I'm like, I'm not like totally against wild caught animals, but I am like totally against getting wild caught amphibians because I think that they just love to die already and they're already fragile. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I definitely wanted a captive bred one and I couldn't find one and it's been like two months now. So finally I was like, well, I'm going to get a Pac-Man frog, but I want a different morph. And I, at, while I was looking, I found this really cool green one. Like there's so many different morphs or colors of them out there and there's like pink ones and they're all so cute and stuff, but I just really wanted like a brown one or a green one. And uh, I found a green one that I really liked. Okay. So 
that one came in and nice. um, it's like this big and it's like, it, it it really looks like a Pac-Man, like the little like <laughs> mur, 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 mur thing. It's got this big mouth. Yeah. It's a mouth and a stomach and it's wow. this big. That's it's wild. so cute though. <laughs> and it doesn't do anything. Like every time, I, like right now it's been in the living room the past couple of days because I've been, I unboxed it. I just put it in a temporary setup and then I'm like, okay, I have to film the rest when the rest of my supplies got here. Yeah. And so I've been like checking on it. Every time I check on it, it's just sitting there like doing nothing and I'll be like, oh man, it hasn't moved or something. And Eric's like, what do you think it's going to do? Like they don't yeah. move. They just <laughs> sit there. And I'm like, I know, but I want it to do something. Like, <laughs> Yeah. I like seeing pictures of them, but I'm, I know that I don't think mm. I want one <laughs> just because they don't, yeah. they're a bump on the log. They are for sure. And I feel like they they have very mixed reputations uh, about like just, existing i guess <laughs> sometimes they they just it doesn't go well for some reason and i feel like it's mostly with wild caught ones yeah so we'll see i guess and, and hopefully <laughs> your um your poison dart frogs aren't are good too because oh, i man. know those are dicey as well so they can be but i'm pretty confident i did a lot of research good. and i spent good. a lot of time on this enclosure trying to make it optimal and i like have have built this kind of rapport up with uh, Amphibicast. So I'm like bouncing ideas right. off him and I sent him a bunch of pictures of the enclosure as I'm building it, getting tips and feedback from him about, you know, what what's best. And the dart frog enclosures made by Exoterra, which are not sponsored. They did not send us, I paid full retail for it. But I will nice. say that they their design is based off of some dart frog scientists in Europe or something like that. So I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of care went into this type, building this enclosure. It looks like all their other 18 by 18 by 18s, but it has different ventilation, different top, has a drain at the bottom, got like a misting system. And so I'm, I'm really excited to do it. But the weird thing is I posted pictures of building the enclosure, like hardscaping it, building the background and stuff. And I didn't record any of that because that's like when we were talking about creative outlets, like that's one of the ways that I relax. I enjoy building the enclosures. And mm -hmm. when you film building the enclosures, it's no longer an enjoyable hobby. Now it's part of the uh -huh. job. So I didn't film it and people were like upset. I'm like, you don't want to, like, it's boring. I'm like spraying foam and latex and silicone. Like it, it's not captivating or, you know, it's not intriguing content. Yeah. Why would you want to see this? And and people, and I, apparently I just don't know what people want to see. And because there's a lot of people are like, we really want to know how you do that. It's like, well, I guess... I, then that's why I was like, when I redo my ball python, I'm building a background for that as well and doing some hardscaping. So that I will record and kind of show the process yeah. of how I do it. But it's like for a long time, keeping tarantulas was my hobby that the way that I relaxed and unwinded. Mm -hmm. And and now that that's my job, it's like, well, I got to figure out something else to do to enjoy. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so building enclosures is, I, I, I enjoy that. I, I like planning it out and creating it because it's very, I don't want to sound like self-indulgent, but it is an artistic expression, kind of like trying to recreate a natural environment. And Wow, yeah, closure. how self-indulgent of you to enjoy <laughs> things, Richard. God, this well, ego, I can't take artistic. it. <laughs> You're like, not artistic? But I feel like, I mean, watch some SERP design videos. Like that guy oh, I is, know. Uh, is amazing. He puts us to shame. Yeah. And that's where I've like, Stop. that's why I was, when people were saying, make a video, I'm like, no, I can't do anything better than a herp, like serp, serp a design or whatever. I was like, go watch his video. Yeah. He's setting the bar too high. That's not fair. <laughs> you need to calm down over there. Serp yeah, no design. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I watched like 10 of his videos last night back to back. <laughs> so I was the trying to flare. figure out uh, my king snake enclosures. Like I just feel like, a, I mean, a 40 gallon is like the biggest enclosure that I can really find to house these things in that's, you know, works for what I have available and the space I have available. And I'm and yeah. sometimes Check I'm like, and habitats. I really want something bigger and cooler. And Email them. I will, I will do that. I'll reach out to him. Cause I was for like sure. looking at how he, cause he built this like huge uh, enclosure, like from plywood for his King snake. And I'm like trying to figure out, can I do that? Like I have a lot of tools and, uh, but yeah, maybe I'll just reach out to Zen Habitat, see if they can help me out. <laughs> They're awesome. Yeah. Cool. So you've got, you're working on your Pac-Man frog video. You got anything, any other exciting projects in the works that's coming out soon you want to let people know about? Well, I have something very exciting here. I've got these little guys. For those just listening so, to the podcast, that is a, um, a green hornworm, I believe. So, you know... I can't imagine one. what I would do with this. 
It couldn't be another feeding my tarantula gummy worm videos. Is Man, it? you know, it's been a minute. I realized that the other day people were asking me and I was like, you know what? You guys are right. I, it's been like a month since I've done one. It feels very weird. Like, yeah, where have I been? That's like my favorite <laughs> video to film. Oh man, that's like that. The, when you post those videos, <laughs> it annoys me and like a deep sense. Like, Good. <laughs> I'm like, gummy worms? Why? Why are you calling them gummy worms? Like, I don't know why, but it offends my sensibilities. <laughs> it's um, Pecco's fault because when he did, he did like a video a long time ago where he included, you could email him feeding clips and he was yeah. going to react to them. Okay. I don't know if you ever saw it, but I don't think I this saw was when one. I f- literally, I had just started YouTube and I heard that he was doing that. So I yeah. sent him a clip of my grandma stole a polka eating one of them. And um, he had never, I guess, seen one. And he's, he goes, what is it doing? Eating gummy bear? <laughs> <laughs> and so um, we started, like, eventually we, like, talked and, like, started, you know, establishing a friendship there. And yeah. he, we would call them gummy bears. And then when I would do feeding videos, people would be like, oh, it's gummy worms. Call them gummy worms. And I'm like, why did, why did we not, call, why did he call it a gummy bear? It's a gummy <laughs> worm. They're right. So then I just started calling them gummy worms. Yeah. And then other people like <clears throat> Dion started taking my title and uh, he calls them, he calls them gummy worms. And now everybody calls them gummy worms. <laughs> However, to be fair, Peko started it. And then my, my subscribers are the ones who uh, twisted it into what mm. it is. So, yeah, I yeah. will not jump on that bandwagon. <laughs> you better not. I, I I'll let you keep that. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm I'm partially joking, but it's still, I was just like, that made me cringe a little bit. <laughs> good. Just at the idea of good. a tarantula gummy worm. But yeah, yeah no, but it's that's, good to know that's that That's about backstory. all I have. That, that's about all I have like lined up. I mean, there's yeah. other things that I want to get done. Like my trapdoor spider hasn't made a trapdoor yet. So I think I'm going to rehouse it. Okay. And like say my trapdoor spider is broken because like we'll see if it makes a trapdoor, but it's been a minute. So what if kind it of doesn't happen, do you use? what kind of what? <laughs> kind of, I said what kind of substrate do you use? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm terrible. Um, what kind of substrate? Reptis oil. Reptis oil? Okay. Yeah. Which one? Which species is it? Do you remember? Uh, I don't remember the name of okay. it. Because I, I, it, it, I couldn't say it if I did. I have yeah. it written down though. I did write that one down. <laughs> yeah. I, I have a few. I think I posted on Twitter or something about this. Like I thought they were dead because I couldn't, I couldn't find them. I couldn't even find their trap door. I was like, I don't even know if they're still in the enclosure. Maybe they escaped somehow or they died and curled up and just turned to dust. Like, I don't know what happened to them. And I dumped the enclosures to investigate. It was like, was there not enough humidity? Was there too much humidity? What, what was the issue? And they were both very much alive. They had grown a lot and they were very pissed off. Like, how dare yeah. you destroy my house? <clears throat> it's was, always a 50-50 oh, thing. Either they're going to be dead and they've been dead for a while or yeah. they're going to be bigger and angrier than the last time you saw them. And yeah. it's like such a dicey thing. And honestly, like I just debate sometimes if I should even like really get more trapdoors because I don't really like, I think they do fine in captivity. I don't think that's the issue. I think the issue is you can't see them. So you never mm-hmm. know if they're alive or dead unless the cricket's disappearing still. Then you, then you know something's eating it. Yeah. But but they don't always oh disappear. God, like they were, I mean, yeah. that's why I got, like they weren't eaten. And it's like, well, maybe, I knew that there was a possibility that maybe they're just in primo, but it's yeah. like, they haven't eaten for months. And I, I just, I couldn't find the trap door. That was the biggest concern. Cause I was like, mm-hmm. usually you can kind of see it, but I did like a naturalistic type of enclosure. So there's moss and uh, leaf litter and rock. You know what I mean? It's like, Mm-hmm. They just camouflaged it really well, so I couldn't even yep. see it. Like <laughs> they were just that good, apparently. Because well, I mean, once I dumped it, I was like, "That is a very long wide tunnel that they had burrowed deep into there, you know, <laughs> a little enclosure. Like it was very elaborate. They've been doing a lot of work. I just, I just, and I couldn't see it. It was like hidden amongst this like sphagnum moss. It was impressive, uh, but you know, so I rehoused them, and they, they. I mean, like it did. It was within hours. Like I put all the substrate back yeah. in there, but it's like a weird mix. Like I. When I I was talking to um you know bugs in cyberspace uh, sent me a few of them, and he kind of was suggesting like one of them's um uh I, I want to say Oregon like he he would send me pictures of where these are found in Oregon or California like this mm-hmm. is where we found the species and like this is what it looks like so I tried to emulate that in the habitat so he was like you know this this substrate or not the substrate but the the dirt here is very 
there's a lot of clay in it. So I got a lot of that excavator clay and mixed it in to kind of kind of give it that yeah. similar type. And he's like, you know, this species always kind of builds their trapdoor around the roots uh, of a tree at an angle. You know, so try so I, I that's how I build that enclosure. And it, it's just it's kind of doing that. I've had a lot more success with the trapdoors trying to emulate the ground that they're normally on than I did just putting yeah. in cocoa fiber or just straight rep to soil or anything. Yeah, I think I'm gonna mix it up. I think that that's probably gonna be a video soon if it doesn't do something. <laughs> yeah. And uh, hopefully we can unlock that mystery because something is, it's so weird because you never, you should never see them and you always want to see them. But if you do see them, then something's just not right. It's very true. And they're cool looking, but man, they're, they're always in a bad mood. (laughs) I know. I got the first one I got, man, I don't remember who sent it to me. I want to say it was either Tom Patterson or, or Bugs in Cyberspace, but it was already like full grown. And it ended up dying, but I think it was just old no. age. <laughs> it was just like, well, also with the trapdoors, they're they're commonly wild caught, and they're commonly mm-hmm. wild caught as adults. And it, this is how I feel about the centipedes too. They're usually like wild caught adults, a lot of species. So I feel and scorpions. I feel like it's very very dicey with them. Like I feel like a wild caught adult tarantula. Typically, you're gonna still get you know some years out of them, and they're long lived and they're hardy typically. So I feel like you know you're going to have better luck with that than a wild caught centipede or scorpion or trapdoor because they, they're probably at the end of their life, especially if somebody is managing to catch them and find them. Like they're not catching and finding the healthy <laughs> ones, you know, like right. those ones are long gone. And so that's the, just my theory, the I guess. And at that point. Yeah, you know, and it's like very, you know, there, that's a whole other conversation to be had. But it's one of those things where it's like, the more I'm like keeping and getting into the hobby and stuff, I'm just kind of like getting this experience yeah. and realizing things that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's a great point. So don't don't feel bad. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I always feel bad whenever anything yeah. dies. But like at the same time, sometimes it's just completely out of your control. Yeah, and, and I reached out. I mean, this was, I don't remember how long ago, but they were like, well, I mean, it was, because it was wild caught. I mean, they, from the very mm-hmm. get-go, they're like, well, I mean, we they, got they, this I in think Texas. they almost always are, yeah. <laughs> you know, and then it was like, hey, they're like, you didn't do anything wrong. It, it it probably was just old. Like, you know, it was old. Yeah. When we, it was full grown when we got it. We have no idea how long it, it had been that way. But it's like, I love scorpions. I love looking at them. I love watching them. But they're a pain to film, for one, because they just want to run and hide. <laughs> and they yeah. got a lot more endurance for running than a tarantula does. But also, they're, um, I've been running that issue as well. Is like The hobby, it seems like the scorpion hobby is not large enough. There's not as much demand mm-hmm. to support people breeding them in captivity with regularity to where all that's available is captive bred species. It's a little better now than it was a few years ago. But yeah. it just seemed like there at the beginning, anything you've got, was going to be wild caught almost. You know? Yeah. And it was kind of frustrating. It's like, I don't want to support wild caught, but it, like I ordered some tarantulas off this one dude. I haven't talked to him since, but it was like, he, I, I he had them listed on his website. I ordered, I don't know, I think it was like five Arizona bark scorpions or something. And then he was like, Hey, I'm going to ship him out tomorrow. Uh, we're heading out tonight to go capture him. I'm like, what? <laughs> I paid you for scorpions you don't have. Oh like you gotta go pull God. them out of the wild. I would be like, never mind. Please do <laughs> yeah. not do that. Like it was it was disturbing. Oh but then my like God. they're so I mean, they're like a pest down there. You know what I mean? People are paying exterminators well, to get rid of them. Yeah. So it's like I kind of understand it, but it was also like uh, you never mentioned they were gonna be captive or they were gonna be wild caught, you know? Like, yeah. No, I mean, and that is like a legitimate thing. Like a lot of the things, like I mean are considered pests like that mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. But it's just crazy. I can't believe that. Yeah. And he's like, <laughs> That's well, another level. There there's so many of them out here. Like I just, I just go outside my backyard with a black light and there's hundreds. <laughs> I'm like, okay. But I'm actually having yeah. um a Rachno Drew agreed to come on the podcast to talk about scorpions. So I'm kind of excited about that because uh, have you ever do you know him at all? I don't think I'm familiar, but yeah. that sounds cool. Does he like he's a scorpion breeder. Uh, and okay. dealer. So, I mean, he's got, I've, I've ordered from him a few it times. It sounds familiar. It definitely had, sounds familiar. Yeah. yeah. I've had, I've had good experiences. I mean, it's one of those, when you're talking about small dealers, people get, um, they get their opinions based off their interactions with them. You know, it's like that. Yeah. There's some people don't like him. Uh, he gets trashed sometimes in Facebook groups um, because it's, he's got a full-time job. Like a lot of the breeders out there, you know, they're working 40, 50 hours a week. And then their side hustle is, Part of their hobby is is you know breeding and selling tarantulas or scorpions or whatever. So sometimes 
people kind of get used to that Amazon.com mentality. Like I place the order and it's going to be in two days or even like Fear Not Tarantulas or some of the other larger businesses. It's very, you place your order and you know it's going to ship out in so many days. Mm -hmm. But when you're dealing with some of these smaller breeders, it's like, it will ship when I have time. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's like, I I got a kid and a wife and a full-time job. I I can't deal with you until next week, you know? And (laughs) people get really upset about that. And I think a lot of times it's people that, I mean, hell, try to try to get anything quick 10 years ago. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's like, (laughs) it wasn't happening. Yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to it though, because there's a lot of questions I want to and I just kind of, I think that the scorpion hobby needs more expo- exposure. I, I feel like it's as yeah. cool as tarantulas in a lot of ways. And I just, people just don't uh, know about them. I'm just very careful about like what I keep. And there's a lot of very hot scorpions <laughs> that I personally won't keep anything that's like considered like deadly, like actually deadly, like, you know, like some true spiders and scorpions. Yeah. So that that's- kind of rules out a lot of cool scorpions that people keep. <laughs> yeah. I, someone sent me a death stalker once and I was really nervous about it. Uh, yeah. Not because I was afraid it was going to hurt me, but it's, it was like my you luck. Have a family. Yeah. That would be the one enclosure a That's cat decides to knock over mm-hmm. and it, and then it like hides and comes and stings my kid on the foot or something. Like Not to say that people who keep them and have families are like doing anything wrong. I don't think that they are. I just personally am like, you where I just kind Mm. of am very careful about that. So I don't keep anything deadly, except you could say your brown recluse can be deadly. Well, they (laughs) live here too. So it's better when they're in the enclosure instead of like behind my toilet. So like, (laughs) I do have a couple (laughs) of um, African fat tail scorpions uh, and a dectros genus um, Mm -hmm. that they are, I mean, they're not, I don't think they're the most, but I mean, they, they can, they can really mess you up. They can really put a hurt on you. I don't know if they can kill you or not, but it's probably like, they're up there. Most people are like, that's yeah. one of the hottest species out there. And that's the, that was one of the reasons, not just to have an environment, like a microclimate, so all the scorpions are warmer, but all of my really hot scorpions are desert species as well. So I can put them inside that enclosure and have it locked. So yeah. even if they, like, for one, the cat can't get to it. Like my cats don't mess with them, but I know that's always a possibility. And they can mm-hmm. get curious and knock over an enclosure accidentally. So they're they're inside this larger enclosure, so the cats can't get to them. If they somehow figured a way to open up their enclosure, now they're just stuck into it inside of a larger enclosure. There's mm-hmm. no way they can get out of. So it's it's like a yeah. double layer of protection and provides yeah, a warmer that's what environment. I did. Yeah, yeah I, I did that for better. my old worlds, my old world slings. When I first got into old worlds, I had them double enclosured <laughs> like that. It's I mean it's foolproof. If anybody has concerns about something like that, that's the way to do it. Definitely. So. Um, but I, I like with most things in life, you kind of get like, I made, I made that video recently, you know, the last video, uh, I was rehousing my in Balfouri communal. And I guess at some point I just stuck my hand in the enclosure and grabbed a piece of cork bark and pulled it out. And people in the comments were like, you're insane. That's so crazy. I was sweating. I can't believe you did that. And I'm like, yeah, but I knew where the three spiders were. Like I had eyes yeah. on them and they were in, they were, they were like in uh defense, not defensive. They were like in stress mode. You know what I mean? They're all curled up. I was like, they weren't going anywhere. Like you, yeah. you deal with them enough, you start to kind of, I'm not saying I understand them and that they will never surprise me, but I, I, I didn't see that as a dangerous thing to do. Like I could see them. Well, maybe if you the get camera. bit, yeah. you can make a video about it. <laughs> and and there's your content. And also, if you, if you are that concerned, just text Tarantula Cribs and be like, hey man, am I going to die? <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. And and you know there you go you got your you got it made okay you can get content out of it you got you can text somebody you got this like yeah it's all good no but I got Coyote I, Peterson in my phone I'll yeah, just call him like him hey up. what do I do man yeah for <laughs> hey, what, sure yeah <laughs> but yeah it was uh that was kind of crazy comments comments have gotten crazy this last six months and I had somebody I know you've been dealing with this recently somebody was on I'm not even gonna say their name because I don't want to give them any any uh, shout outs, but they left a comment on that, on this tarantula cribs unboxing video I made like almost a year ago or so. So it was like out of nowhere, this, you know, old video pops up. Uh, somebody left a comment on it and they were saying, I don't understand why anyone pays for this overpriced garbage when I can go on eBay or <laughs> Alibaba and buy the exact same enclosure for like a fifth of the price. And I just was like, Hey, I understand the confusion because one acrylic enclosure looks very similar to the other when you're just looking at photos online, 
but these are much thicker, higher quality. They got these magnets. Yeah. Try to explain the situation. Thinking, I just educated this person for a misunderstanding. That's totally, un, you know, I, I understand why they would be, they wouldn't understand the difference possibly. Right. And they came back with this nasty, I mean, they were just being very insulting and uh, like, well, if you aren't willing to take criticism, then you shouldn't be on social media and you definitely shouldn't be creating content. And I was like, so I should not assume you are a decent human being and will behave in an appropriate manner. Like, you're not going to say that crap to my face. You got to hide behind an anonymous screen name and no profile picture, you know, to be this insulting. Yeah. And I was like, and those are my only two options. There's also, there's a third option where I shadow ban your ass. <laughs> so you can scream all you want oh, yeah. and no one is going to see it <laughs> except for you. <laughs> so yeah. And then I, I was feel like, that to my core. Yeah. I was like, I probably shouldn't have even responded. I should have just uh, shadow banned them. Like, you know, whatever, whatever that's called. Hide users' comments. So they still see the comments, yeah. but nobody else does. Because I, I feel like I got, that would drive them insane. Why is nobody responding or liking <laughs> my comments? <laughs> that's what I've been doing too. Like if, it's, like, if it's just like a random hate comment or if it's like something that's not, I don't know. If it's like something general, like, ah, oh, cat is a bitch. I'm like, all right, like, thanks. But okay, whatever. But like if it's something like very vicious and they're repeatedly like spamming it, like sometimes yeah. I'll get like 10 hate comments from the same person on a video. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm literally not like, if, even if you were saying something nice, I would probably like be like, okay, shadow ban, because I don't need you to comment like so much spam mm -hmm. in a row. And first, I don't even think YouTube like allows that. But like yesterday I got a particularly vicious hate comment <laughs> and like before we end this let me share because this okay. i am um, i'm curious to see how you would have responded they okay. said what's your plan for a natural disaster like if a hurricane tornado massive tropical storm earthquake fire or flood hits your home are you evacuating 100 pets or are you leaving them behind because it's too many to carry what happens if a bomb goes off dis destroys part of the home and rescue workers are exposed to tarantulas or if damage happens and you release a group of insects not na natural to the area uh, it's a, literally a one in billion chance that blah, blah, blah. And then they say, you cannot evacuate the amount of spiders you have. All your pets would be left behind because you have a husband and a daughter. So no, you cannot care for all of them. And I said something along the line, like I normally wouldn't respond, but I mean, it's a legitimate question. And to be fair, I do actually have a backup plan in case yeah. anything were to happen. I have a bunch of tubs under my bed that are ready to go to have snakes and whatever needs to be shoved in them. They're... Yep. We got it. But the thing is, is the way that it was like said to me like that. And I like responded and I was like, yeah, you're right. If a bomb goes off, I'm taking my dogs, my husband and my daughter and I'm getting out of there. Like, <laughs> okay, like you're right. And then they literally yeah. went on to say it is hoarding because you have no plan and collect more than you can remember the names for. So stop spreading misinformation because you're upset. You're called out for this behavior. Maybe you should have looked at yourself and your behavior instead of jumping to defend yourself, blah, blah, blah. Um, think about the firefighters, rescue workers, paramedics who may encounter your horde to save your family. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I was like, I don't even like, first of all, valid point. Yeah. Maybe we should have uh, backup plans and situations like that. But like, how are you going to literally, uh, Richard, you're a hoarder because <laughs> you're guilty too. No, but like, <laughs> how are you going to put that on somebody? Like if, if a bomb goes off, you can't get all your tarantulas out. So you're a hoarder. Yeah. I, I, I understand what the people are crazy. <laughs> what the, I, I, mean, I made a whole video say? on emergency preparedness and oh, I didn't know my that. like Sorry. three backup plans, you know, cause it's like just, just because of the life I've lived, I know how quickly a situation can mm -hmm. change and all of a sudden you don't have living arrangements anymore or you yeah. don't have a job or whatever. So it's like, I, I have a, you know, if, if I have arrangements made, uh, understandings and, 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 you know, backup plans. So it's like, if something, if, the, if my house gets flooded, which is always a concern because we live right by a creek mm -hmm. uh, or there's a house fire or whatever, it's like, I, I know I have, uh, you know, kind of like you were saying, I've got these Tupperware tubs in the garage and a whole bunch of deli cups and, yeah. all, you know, everything that I could, I could quickly stick everybody in there, fill up the tubs, throw them in the car, get out. I mean, I would have to leave yeah. the enclosures behind, but if my house is on fire getting flooded... Yeah, that's the least of my worries. Just get the living things. Right. The, exactly. It's like your priority is yourself and your family and your mm -hmm. dogs. Yeah. <laughs> if you have cats. dogs. <laughs> <laughs> no, the cats, you can just open your door. They will, they'll, they'll live their they'll life. Survive. They'll go kill some wildlife. You know, yeah. that's what they do. But yeah. <laughs> always, you, you know, I can, I can see pe why people would be like, what are you going to do in that situation? Or what would you do? But like, obviously 
my family and my dogs and probably my hamster and bearded dragon if I can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's the same if you had priceless artwork in your house or a huge collection of something valuable. It's like, it's it, that all of a sudden is not the highest priority. You know, it's like exactly like you don't even think is, about that in an yeah. emergency situation. I feel like you're not even going to think about that. Like it would be hard, but like you're mm -hmm. if if a bomb is going off, like yeah. you're gonna there's going to be some other issues there <laughs> that I feel like are a little bit more of a priority. Yeah. But like also, I have thought like, what if like the world there was an apocalypse or something? What would you do? Like if there was zombies and the world was actually ending. What would you do? And I think what I would do is just open all my enclosures and leave. Wow, that's not that's not where my plan is. No, Mine... but pretend like the, it's the zombie apocalypse. Okay, oh, the have. world is already ending. Yes. Then, then what are you going to do? I would obviously like let everybody out no, and be like, No, I'm going to eat them. <laughs> like that's my plan. <laughs> what the? <laughs> all right, this this live stream is or this <laughs> this podcast is over. End it now. <laughs> I mean, they, they eat them in Cambodia. If like there's no food. My tarantulas will, will become dinner. <laughs> I will send you Eric's uh, dehydrator and you can let me know how that goes. Okay. I mean, I, I love my, my tarantulas. I'm not going to eat them. But I mean, if it's like a <laughs> nuclear holocaust and there's no food, that's a that's a great source of protein right there. I feel like it's no, emergency No, but say you had to leave your home though. Like you say you had to leave your home. And are you going to bring 20 tarantulas with you to snack on on the way to wherever you're going? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. If I'm going to leave them behind, I would definitely probably let them out of their enclosure. They I would let everybody house. out. I'd go hit up Tropical World Pets. I'd open all, I'd break their window and I'd open all their enclosures. And then I'd go up to the St. Louis Zoo and we would <laughs> we would make sure that all the giraffes get out and evacuate oh, wow. because otherwise they're now just going to die zombie in captivity. Giraffes? Well, imagine like zombie zookeepers like fighting you on this. <laughs> but honestly, we should probably just stop. Yeah, but, it's getting a little crazy. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> That's okay. But I understand what you're saying, though. I mean, that was a nobody's a, listening anymore, anyway. Okay, <laughs> that's a, uh, a it's a weird comment for somebody to leave. I mean, like creating this insane hypothetical situation just to be like you're a bad person. It's like I know. Okay, and that funny, one that in ten million poss that that chance that that could happen, I will take that I'm a bad person. But that's not going to happen. So until then, I think I'm okay. But there, yeah. that's not going to be the case much longer. There's some crazy legislation going through that's going to rip anonymity away from the internet to where like if you're going to be with? on YouTube or Facebook or anything like that, it has to be a verified account that has your actual name and address and all that is going to be associated with it. So you can't... I don't know how I feel about that, but okay. Yeah. I mean, when I, <laughs> from, from one side, like somebody that does stuff online as far as like posting, like, you know, me 10 years ago would be a hundred percent against it. But now being on this yeah. side of it, it's kind of like, <clears throat> I think this will get people to act a little more normal. <laughs> They'll be a little, a little more friendly or, you know, have a little bit more, um, I don't even want to say manners, but you know what I mean? Like you treat people like humans when you know. Yeah. That, you know, we lose not, like yeah. that. Like as creators, like we literally, and I'm not like complaining because I don't like, I think, you know, obviously there's more good than bad yeah. doing what we do, but like we get reduced down to these objects. Like people forget that we're like people and we have feelings. And like, even yeah. though we get a lot of hate comments, like it's still not very. She's got a little bit of shedding going on. Oh, she's shedding. Okay. Oh, well, no. this is a podcast, so nobody's going to really see her. Uh, oh, that is a beautiful snake. Thank you. Is that a, is that a uh, corn snake? What is that? She's adventurous, right? Now. Yeah. Oh, here she's tangling up my headphones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a beautiful snake. But yeah, Thank I think you. that it's um like it, part of me. Like sometimes I, I it really depends on the mood. But I'll, I'll be like in a just a shitty mood, and I'll read a comment, and it just it really affects me. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. God damn. And that person that was like, well, you shouldn't. I can't remember exactly what they said, but it's like you shouldn't be on social media and creating content if you can't take people being assholes to you or something like that. It's like. <laughs> I don't understand why that is, is your logic. Like, why is, why should I not create anything online if, uh, without the, with the expectation, what am I trying to say here? I, why, I know what you're why shouldn't I expect people to speak to me the same way they would if we were in person? Like, why, right? Why is it just we, oh, assume we, that, well, you're creating content so everybody can be an asshole to you and you can't do anything about it? <laughs> I think there's a, it's, we're signing up for it. Yes. And it can be expected. Yes. But that's still not an excuse to literally like abuse or harass like yeah. creators. I mean, that's the, the way it is, but that doesn't mean it's it what is, it should be or that it's that not it can okay. be. Yeah. I mean, it's not yeah. 4chan, man. This is, 
this is YouTube. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, I, I, I don't know. Like I, I, and I, I've, I've trolled people. I get it. But it's also like, I troll them with my name and profile picture. I don't create oh, yeah. an account with no profile picture and like three letters as my screen name and, and, and just harass people. Like, I mean, that's a, I mean, that's a bitch move. I don't know another way of saying it. It's like, you know, but it, I mean, I also, I have a very dark past. You know what I mean? Like I've had a gun more than once pointed in my face and it's like, I survived that. Like mm -hmm. your, your words aren't going to hurt me, but man, I would really like to meet you in person <laughs> and have this conversation like, face yeah. to face. I'm not, well, I'm the opposite. You're like, yeah, I'll, I'll take care of it. You know, uh, come say it to my face. I'm like, I am not going to go to this expo because this person said this to me four years ago and it hurt my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm, yeah, I, I'm the, uh, I'm not saying I'm a, like a hard ass that's going to fight somebody. It's more like, I just want to see you in person to see if you will actually say the same thing. You know what I mean? Have that same thing. Yeah. Of, you because know, I know that 99% oh. of the time that's, you know, in person you're going to be really nice to me. <laughs> Have you experienced this? I know you don't go to a lot of expos, but like there, like obviously there are people that we see participate in groups and recognize, like not so much me anymore because I don't ever look at groups anymore for another mm -hmm. reason. But like back in the day when I would look at groups, there were people that I would see and encounter and they would like say like, bad things about me. Maybe I knew them more on a personal level or maybe my YouTube channel was just smaller and we yeah. had talked or whatever. And they would just say terrible things. And then I'd see them at an expo and they'd like come up to me and like be like, hey, what's up? How's it going? Or this and that. And like try to act like they don't constantly like post mean stuff about me. And yeah. I'm like, why, why are you... What is... What's happening? Like what's yeah. going on, guys? Like... <laughs> Yeah. Why are you like that to me on the internet? Or you say these things. Maybe they think I don't see it, but like, you know how the internet is. Everybody screenshots everything and sends it to you like mm -hmm. <laughs> at all times. <laughs> like, so yeah. of course I saw or what you said or what you did or whatever. So yeah. like, why are you coming and pretending like we're friends? I've, I don't know really, if you've experienced that, but. I, a few times. And it's, it's really fun. Like, cause I hold a grudge. Like, I mean, I, I, I deal, <laughs> uh -oh. I, I have resentment issues that I'm constantly working on trying to let this stuff go. Uh, but I, it's like, I don't remember what I did a couple of days ago, but I will remember your face and your name and almost exactly what you said <laughs> 10 years ago <laughs> and, and, and hold that grudge. And there's been, it, it, it happened at NARBC a few times. People will walk up and I'm like, I recognize that face. And then it's like, as they're talking to me and asking for like, Will you sign, you know, the back of this sticker for me? And like, I almost want to just write, fuck you. Because <laughs> oh, it's like, no. I remember what you said two years ago in the Tarantula Planet Facebook group about my video. Oh, <laughs> <know>? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, I haven't no, had it. I'll just smile, oh, say yes. <laughs> I haven't had it that up close, like where yeah. somebody's like asked me to sign something. But yeah, it's mm. so bizarre to me, like how the, they will completely harass and like m like bully you online. And then like in person, they come up to you at like a show or something. And they're like, oh my God, hey, what's up? How are you? What are you getting? Da, 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 da. Mm. Especially if I'm like filming, I'm like, I'm not going to put you in my video, you yeah. know, or if they like even have like a business or something, I'm, like, I'm not going to film your table. Like, why are you talking to me? Yeah. And that ha that's happened virtually a few times. Like, People that I've seen, especially when I first started the first year or so, mm -hmm. were very critical and, I mean, just, and not even, like, about the content of the video, just me as a person. Like, they didn't like yeah. my personality or my face or whatever it was, said some mean <laughs> shit, and now they're like, oh, wow, he's got a little bit of a following now. Maybe he'll help promote our business. And it's like, no, like, I don't want anything that you're going to oh, send yeah. me. <laughs> like. A hundred percent. I'm the same way. I've definitely declined many offers from businesses that are owned by people that have bullied um, me or like really taken it very far. And I have like personal like feelings against that person for mm -hmm. like behave past behaviors. Like, do they think that you just like forget like, or, or like there's like a trade off, like I'll take your free spiders, even though like you treated me like really bad. Yeah. And <laughs> Even though like, you made fun of my skinniness and now <laughs> you're one, you want to send me some free spiders. I don't think I will take that. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, like I'm at the point now where you offer me free spiders. That is not an incentive at all. <laughs> it's like, Oh, that's same, a literally. Chore. Like they, that, now I got to spend more money on enclosures and more time on care. Like, 
no, that's not a good deal for me. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't need any, I have all the spiders I want, you know, like figure out something well, yeah. else. Um, and, and that's a, a whole nother thing too, because I'm constantly having people like trying to send me things and spiders and I am really like good with what I have and I appreciate it. Um, like, you know, especially when like subscribers are like, can I send you something or whatever? I really appreciate it. But like, I'm just very picky because I'm limited on space exactly. where we're at. It's not time. It's not a time issue. It's just literally a space issue. If I had more space, I would probably have like more snakes or something, to be honest. Yeah, I'm just very picky. And also like not to be like as oh, tarantula cat, but like I'm friends with a lot of vendors. And so when they get their list, you prob probably the same for you when they get their list of what they're going to you know, get in or whatever, like they probably send it to you and you mm -hmm. can look at it and pick off what you want. Or at least that's that's how it how it is for yes. me. But you know, you have access to what you want at all times. So when a business approaches you and they're like, I want to send you spiders, it's like, you know, oh well thank you. But like I it's not I I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I literally can't. Yeah. And also I don't have an interest in keeping a lot of the species, you know. Yeah. I, I totally understand. And I mean, like right now there's so, I mean, somebody reached out and wanted to send me uh, some vingaroons. Like they're they and I mean they, they don't anything for it. It was just like a, fall, a subscriber or something it was like, hey, my Vingaroon had babies. Can I send you some? And I was like, you know, I have a Vingaroon and they, they don't, they're not that fascinating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Having multiples isn't going to really, I was just like, I just don't have the space. Like I would love to. I appreciate that you offered. Yeah. You know, I, but there are a lot of other YouTubers out there that don't have a Vingaroon that would benefit. From, from having that offered to them, like hook them up. Right. I appreciate it. I just don't have, I don't have the room for it. And uh, for sure. I mean, it's like, yeah. I, like I'm really like when they offered me those dark frogs, I was like, hell yes. I've wanted dark frogs since I was a kid. And exactly. I, that I will invest some money in because it's something I really want. Uh, crested gecko is something else I'd love to add to my collection, but it's like beyond, I mean, I guess the crested gecko is about maybe a hog nose snake. I always think those are pretty cool looking. I oh, I love I those. those. We but, need permits for those though. We do? And in the U.S.? In Missouri. Oh, in Missouri? Okay. Yeah. That's strange. I mean, West Virginia is... We have native native ones, West. so... Oh, okay. It's like a native thing. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. I can have a kangaroo in my backyard here if I want. We'll rub it in, Richard. Yeah. Why don't you get one for the views? <laughs> I will totally do that. <laughs> and I'll, I'll tag <laughs> that's, that a, That's a whole other thing, too. <laughs> like, it's it's interesting when people are like, oh, you, sh that you guys only get things for the views or something like the, the more recent drama that flared up it's like yeah. no i literally have people constantly asking me to get a cobalt blue or an s cal or get, get this or that and i know if i got it in belfori if i know if i got it everybody would be like oh my god and i'd get all these views and and it, all this but it's like i don't mm -hmm. have a desire at least right now to keep that like it was the same for the t stormy like everybody was like get a bird eater get a bird eater and i'd be like no i don't want one i don't want one and then you know mo offered me this j extra large tarantula cribs and when i like saw it i was like you know what this would be a really awesome setup for yeah. a t stormy now i think i want to do it because i i'm feeling inspired and i want to keep one now so i'll do it now <laughs> but it's like if i really wanted to yeah. like get all these views i would be out there getting the things that people ask for. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not. I'm literally, I'm going to be like, hey guys, guess what? I got another Pac-Man frog. I know none of you <laughs> care, but I wanted one. <laughs> yeah. You should get an inbound for a communal though. They're pretty cool. I, I Maybe one those. day. I'm just really like, I don't know. I, I, would, I always wanted like a big female, just yeah. one. But I mean, maybe at some point, I don't know, but it's just I know not. A guy. I don't, I'll send him your way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. uh, there's, there was uh I'm jealous about your tarantula cribs extra large enclosure because I saw your video where you had that and I was like, I need one of those. So I reached out to Mo and I'm like, look, I also have some T-Sturmies that need larger enclosures. Hook me up. And, you know, sometimes talking to him can be hit and miss, at least on my experience. Like he, he works, you know what I mean? So it's like I send him a message and then he's got his kid or something like that. So it's a day before he, he replies or sometimes a couple of days and I lose track of the conversation. So I thought, he had agreed to send me two extra large tarantula cribs enclosures for my tea stormies. And yeah. I was, I got them in the mail, two big boxes from tarantula cribs. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do a complete unboxing on in rehousing on camera. I'm going to open these up on camera and I, and I got everything set up and I start recording and I go to open them up. There were, there was a lot of tarantula cribs enclosures in there, but none of them. <laughs> They were all small. Ungrateful. You're <laughs> ungrateful, Richard. Yeah, I was like... How dare you criticize what? Mo? <laughs> Where are the two big ones? 
<laughs> so I was like, well, this screwed this uh, video idea. But luckily, yeah. I had just got that package. Uh, I got a package in from uh, Tom Patterson. This, you know, I mean, I and I had kept these. It'd probably been a month or two. I hadn't opened up these boxes from tarantula grips because I thought I knew what was in them. And, Did you uh, say anything to him? Oh, yeah. He, he I sent him a message. Okay. I was like, uh, I, I think we had a miscommunication. I thought you sent me two extra large enclosures and I opened it up and there was a bunch of mediums and small arboreal and terrestrials. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. They came in handy. I definitely could use them. But what's up with those big ones? Like I, I, I could definitely use those. And Where's he's like, the big ones, my guy. Yeah. And he's like, I'm just not happy with the design right now. And I mean, I could send them to you, but they're, they're not with the final. And, you know, I understand what he's saying. He doesn't want to like advertise something that he's not going to be selling. When I posted that video, I was like, now people are going to hit you up asking for them. And he's like, oh yeah, they they have been and they are. And it was also funny too, when I made that jumping spider video, unboxing yeah. like five jumping spiders, I used the medium arboreal and like he sold out of those so fast. <laughs> and so he constantly has jumping spider people asking for those to be in stock. Yeah. And I'm like, you are welcome. <laughs> yeah, this one. Yes. I've got my little, oh, look, it's right Aww. there. This is such a cool, beautiful girl. And she loves Aww. this enclosure. Hey, like, you know what? Get off jumping spider YouTube, okay? That's my niche, okay? Okay, okay. Jeez. No. <laughs> got, you put that thing I away. Got a bunch of them right now. <laughs> Tom sent but me yeah. some strange species. <clears throat> uh, the Colonus That's, Sylvanus. Oh. I'm Sil getting a new Sylvana? species from him. Yeah, it's, it's a cool little, it's a little tiny one. But yeah, he sent me some, not just Phidippus Rigius or whatever. He sent me some, some right, cool yeah. ones. Yeah, he's sending me, I think, some too, I think next week or so. But like, I'm also having a moral dilemma because like, he has a very cool new recluse. I mean, it's not new, but he has a different kind of recluse spider. Mm -hmm. And um, so I've been like doing a little research here and there. And I found out that they are just slightly less venomous than the L. Leda, the Laxacelles Leda, which is like the most venomous recluse. Mm hmm and uh, so it's just like slightly less venomous, which the L later apparently causes like multi system organ failure or Jeez. something. But it's so hard to like read things online because, like, you know how <laughs> blown up the brown recluse is? Yeah. It's like, I don't know if it's like the same thing okay. um, where it's like blown up. I don't know. I'm having a huge moral dilemma right now. But I will say that these recluse butts are like little cheetah print. Interesting. Like imagine imagine a brown recluse with like a little cheetah print, but and they're from Africa. So yeah. like that's so cool. Like, and I really want one. And they're communal, but I'm just like, do I want to deal with that? Yeah. Is that safe? So I just gotta do a little bit more research, I guess, before I like go through with it. Yeah. <laughs> Which I feel smart. like I will. <laughs> I feel like I will, but it's just, you know, I gotta Two weeks like from really now, there'll be an unboxing video. <laughs> Probably like a week. I was messaging him last night. I was like, if you can just mail them in like a vial that they can live in with the paper towel and like that would be like a fine enclosure, just do it like that so I don't have to rehouse them. <laughs> well, now I know he's sending you some jumping spiders. I'm going to have to make my jumping spider video showcasing these strange species before you get yours. Well, you know what? Beat Maybe you to the punch. I will make him ship it tonight. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I just made my decision. <laughs> All right. You do that. We'll see. We'll we'll go head to head. See who's jumping spider. And remember, guys, this. code cat ten at tarantulacribs dot com. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I really feel like T Collective Ten will do better. I'm sorry. I really came here and I chose violence today. I yeah, apologize. You did. <laughs> You're never gonna talk to me again after this podcast. <laughs> we are we are no longer friends. We, we started off as enemies, and that's how we will end. Just, de just delete the whole thing. The people don't need to see it. <laughs> I'll be like, uh, I did have Tarantula Cat on the podcast, but she was rude. So uh. She was terrible. <laughs> Actually, it's like, I'm one of those people where if I'm like, like really nice to you, it's probably because like, I'm scared of you or I don't know you very well. <laughs> so if I'm giving you trouble, then typically that means we're really friends. There we go. That. That helps. What? Delete this. <laughs> I'm, I'm closing this. <laughs> She's like, I am How off. How dare you? You can't How run that banner. <laughs> For those listening to the podcast, he currently has cat10 at tarantulacribs.com saves you 10%. 
Is that on the bottom? Is that what they teach yeah, in? Uh, is that how they teach you to read in St. Louis public schools? Yeah, it says I didn't go to like public school. I went to private thing. school. <laughs> oh no, that explains a lot. <laughs> okay, yeah, and you worked at a coffee shop, so that explains even more, Mister First true. Chair. <laughs> This has been a little too revealing of a podcast. I am now uncomfortable. <laughs> I know. You're going to have to edit this down. Like, good luck. I'll edit out anything revealing on my end, but yours, all your, no, no. All your dirty laundry staying. <laughs> You're going to like edit things, like edit words in where I'll be like, I, do, I like, I don't do this or that. And you can just like change my words up and like make it, make me say things that I didn't say. And your gummy worms that you feed to spiders and, you know, TikTok gonna dances. Hate. <gasps> How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> like it was Too like you're far. never gonna do good on TikTok unless you start doing the lip syncing, and I'm like, I'm not doing that. And then you did, you posted that video. I was like, oh, you just sold us all out, tarantula cat. <laughs> Come on, do it. Freaking Bella Porch. Like, you know, I can do patty cake with my granddaughter, and that's about Come as on, good as I can it. do. Come get it. Uh, see, it's. It's deceptively difficult. Like there's there's weird things going on. <laughs> and not there. only, but like think while you're doing it too, because you got to do like the facial expressions to go with it, you know? Yeah. And I always <laughs> feel like nobody wants to see my face. <laughs> I do. I I would give it so many views. Please do it. I, I will do one TikTok dance and I will, I, I will okay. tag you in it. Like this is for Tarantula Cat. <laughs> the people will hold you to it. But there's a spore war going on right now. So yeah, let's wrap that one up. I, yeah. I, I don't feel like that's so much a war as it is me just annihilating you and uh and tarantula cribs well you but, know what i found a dying cicada today that was covered in fungus so ooh, fight me that's that's gonna be a hard one to top i'm Beat just that i i just live so close to so many cool forests that are so wet right now it's like i'm gonna go back out this weekend <laughs> that, that sounded weird didn't it? <laughs> i'm gonna go out <laughs> this is going off the rails fast uh, but there's going to be even more cool mushrooms out this weekend. So it's been raining. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited to go get some more photos. I will look forward to that. Follow us on Instagram if you want to see some awesome tarantula photos. But more importantly, vote on your favorite mushroom photos between uh, me and tarantula cat. She's trying to, uh, she's trying to come at me with some toadstool. I footage. liked mushrooms first. Okay, I liked, liked them first. first. I liked mushrooms first. I was eating mushrooms before you were in elementary school. <laughs> That's not true. Okay, but Middle I school. liked them first. <laughs> okay, you like them first. <laughs> <laughs> the people need to know. <laughs> it all started with tarantula cat. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, if, if for some weird reason you're not aware who this lady is, uh, you can check out her YouTube channel, Tarantula Cat. She makes all kinds of cool videos about tarantulas and, um, and she feeds gummy worms to them for some, un I don't even know why. It's a millennial thing, I suspect. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> she's also on TikTok, Instagram. Do your thing. You do it in the video and you say it so fast. I'm always like, <clears throat> I can barely understand it. How is she saying that? Oh my God. I don't know if I can do it on the spot. I have to like naturally go into it. Like this video if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're not. And you want to. <laughs> I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> it's that last part where you're like, follow me on Instagram. I'm, I'm on it way more than I should be. Or what is it that you say? Like there? this video if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're not. And you want to be. Don't forget I'm in. Oh. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm put on the spot. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I don't. I'm like, you say it and it's so fast. I'm like, wait, what? She's, <laughs> she shouldn't be on it. I'm, it, it's quick. You should go back. Don't and forget watch. I'm on Instagram. Follow me there. It's tarantula.cat. Like, uh, I don't know, Patreon like, podcast. I'm on there way more than I should be or something like that. I can't, I can't, like, I, it has to naturally flow I into it. I can't just, I understand. I can't. I don't mean to put you on the spot. I would just, more just out of morbid curiosity. Like, what exactly is she saying there? I don't know. I feel like I, I, never get the, know. I get the sense of it. Like, you're saying, follow me on Instagram or Twitter or something. I think it's Instagram. And, and no, I don't I say post- follow me. Don't follow me on Twitter because I don't post there. And if I do, it's because I'm in a bad mood. Don't follow me on Twitter. Ooh, that sounds... <laughs> I'm definitely following you on <laughs> or Twitter it's, now. <laughs> or it's Animal Crossing content. But other oh, than yeah. that, don't follow me. Yeah, that's... It's like following uh, Tarantula Haven on Twitter. It's like, he doesn't... He has a Twitter account, but all it is is it links to his Instagram posts. I'm I think like, it's the same thing with what the tarantula hell, cribs. Yeah. They don't use Twitter. Yeah, but they have it. <clears throat> I'm on Twitter. And, and I, uh, yeah, I, I noticed. I embarrass myself on there a lot. I don't know. I should I, not I that. noticed because people always tag us in the same things. And before mm-hmm. we were friends, I would always see that you were tagged in like the same post. And I was like, well, he doesn't follow me, so I'm not going to follow him <laughs> back. <laughs> oh, it's so petty. 
Yeah. Uh, the exotics layers on time. Twitter. That's how yeah. I got to talk to Ants Canada. I tagged him in something on Twitter. He's the best. Yeah. I like that guy. I did you a podcast a, he, with this local group of artists or whatever, like here and they're like Appalachian artist podcast thing. And they invited me on and I'm like, I'm not really an artist. They're like, oh yeah, yeah you, you make videos. It's totally cool. Come on. And that was like how the guy found me is he he likes Ants Canada and he was watching, but you know, he like watches YouTube a lot. Oh my God, there's a dog in your face. Uh, yeah. And, and he was like, I was watching Ants Canada and your video got suggested and I watched it and you had a West Virginia shirt on. And then I noticed you were on Instagram and you were following a lot of the businesses here in Wheeling. And he's like, and then I just, I put two and two together and was like, you live here. We're in the same town. You should come on the podcast. I was like, yeah. Uh, so thanks, Ants Canada, for hooking me up. And uh, Cat's dog just destroyed her. And Sorry, her my dog up. just ripped my, <laughs> my headset out. They were like, what? wait, you haven't given me attention in like two hours. So now we're just going to destroy everything. Well, we should uh, we should take your dog director's cue and wrap this up. So follow Tarantula Cat on Instagram and YouTube, not on Twitter because she is um, just posts terrible things on Twitter. So you don't want to see that. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm sad on Twitter. You're gonna get like a thousand followers on Twitter now. Don't Everybody's follow me on Twitter. <laughs> but you know what you can do? You can go to tarantulacribs.com and you can use my code. It's Cat Ten. Oh my god! You're so much better at this than I am. But I have editorial <laughs> powers, so I'm just going to dub over yeah. you every time. Yeah. <laughs> Say D Collective 10 <laughs> in the deepest possible right, Well, I voice. hope you guys enjoyed this because Richard is never asking me to come back. <laughs> never come back on my podcast. <laughs> oh, God. That sounded like you. But yeah, so thank you so much, Tarantula Cat, for coming on. It's been thank a lot you. of fun having you. It's great talking. I'm glad that we're friends now. It's awesome. <laughs> I, was, I was talking to my wife last night and telling her that you're coming on the podcast. And it dawned on me that, I mean, we talk a lot on Instagram now, like through messengers, messages. And I, I was like, I talk to Tarantula Cat more than I talk to any of my actual friends. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's my fault. <laughs> That's my fault because I get, I get upset and then I start messaging people and I'll be like, I'm upset and like, look at this <laughs> comment or something. And then like, yeah, that's my fault. I'm the only one that doesn't ignore you apparently. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> You no, know, I mean, there's other people that respond, but, but Pecco's in a different time zone, so I can't yeah. really rely on him. And <laughs> Dar uh, Exotic Slayer's in a different time zone. I can't rely on him either. So when it comes to uh, American time zones, I'm like, I'm going to tell Richard I'm upset. <laughs> or Mo, and yeah. he'll be like busy, like working. Yeah. And I'll he's be like... a doctor with kids. He's like, mm, get out of here with that shit. I, I know, he's like <laughs> fighting like COVID in like a hospital. And I'm like, I'm sad today. <laughs> <laughs> Someone was mean to me on the internet. Someone was mean to me on the internet. But anyway, look at this frog. Isn't it cute? <laughs> like, <laughs> well, I was like, well, who's your best friend? Jason, right? And I'm like, yeah. She's like, how often do you talk no, to him? No, it's tarantula cat. I'm like... Every other week, <laughs> she's like, "Yeah, I, th I think Tarantula Cat's your new best friend." And I was like, "No, it's not <laughs> That's happening." That's shameful. That's shameful. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna have to uh, limit our interactions moving Just forward. Mute, mute it. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. But it, seriously, though, thank you for coming on. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you so much. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, and and if you guys enjoyed listening, make sure you're following me on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever it is you listen to your podcast, and subscribe on YouTube if you're watching the video. This is my second channel, The Exotic Pet Collective, uh, and I try to put out podcasts every Thursday, but it's really unreliable. So don't <laughs> don't hold a, hold hold on to that too tired strongly. But I've got a bunch of dart frogs that I need to uh, open up and rehouse. They're impatiently waiting. So uh, everybody, thank you for listening and we will see you next time. Thank you. That was, was a I lot too of fun. mean? Not at all. Okay. You were the perfect okay, amount good. of mean. <laughs> all right, good.